Number five, the boys school sighting. Our first story comes to us from a teacher at a boys school in India who took some of his young students stargazing one fateful night when they saw something unexpected flying through the sky. As he put it, my name is Kanan. I'm a teacher at a boys school in the village of Mayapura, West Bengal. Last week, I saw something that was what you would call a UFO. It was about 8 p.m. I was sitting outside under the stars with some of the boys. I looked up and saw this very bright blue light overhead. It started from there and it was moving very fast. Then, when it came directly overhead, it seemed to slow down and then stop. It had a tail at the back that started small and became bigger. And very clearly, there was a solid object in front of that. It was not at all like a star or a satellite, and it was not very high. I was already staring at it when one boy said, what is that Pradhu? And then the other boy said, what is that? What is that? We all got up and were looking at it. There were six of us five boys and me. My wife was in the kitchen cooking something, and she came out too because we were all shouting. So it was at maybe one and a half palm trees height from the roof of our hut, which is not very high. It was less than five stories above us. We saw it very clearly. Most of them were concentrating on the light. I looked in the front and saw that it was a clear object. It was not a star, and it was not far away. It was right there. And it was also, like, moving around itself, but very slowly. Then it moved slowly slowly away towards the river, where it suddenly picked up speed and disappeared. It was like somebody who slows down to look at something. It was very, very interesting, and the boys kept asking about it. Boys ask all sorts of questions. It was an abnormal thing, and we were completely helpless just looking at it. Did this teacher and his students really witness an alien craft, or is there some other less interstellar explanation for this strange experience? What do you think? Number four, the factory observer. Next up, we have a tale from Brazil, where workers at a water treatment station witnessed a UFO of a truly massive scale. This is their story. The other night, I, Roberto Rabello, saw a huge UFO over the city of Cubateo, St. Paulo. When I arrived at my job at the ETA water treatment station, there were three other fellows watching the phenomenon. It was 12.58 a.m., dawn, and I looked to the north, and there was a UFO at low altitude. One of the technicians said that it must be a short circuit in a near-energy tower. Then, we ascended the tower and realized that the thing we were seeing was not ordinary. The UFO was higher than the energy tower. It had a red light on top and three other red lights below, in a triangular shape. The lights did not blink. Seconds later, between the red lights, a lot of flashes. Hundreds of white flashes. Then, all disappeared suddenly. I estimated that the UFO was bigger than a soccer field. Then, suddenly, once again, the UFO appeared, just like the first time. But this time, when the flashing lights had turned off from the UFO, another object, like a yellow ball, came out, which flew in the direction of the COSIPA, a food factory. But the big UFO itself was no longer visible. Again, suddenly, for the third time, the UFO appeared, and this time, we were able to see a shadow behind it, something triangular. Finally, the UFO moved away in the east direction, passing over the factory. The sighting lasted 20 minutes and was seen by four of us technicians. Why are UFOs hovering over our water treatment plants and food factories? Is this part of their studies on our species, or are they seeking out our weak points in preparation for a sinister invasion plot? Let us hope we never have to find out. Number three, UFO stalker. Our next story is from Germany and tells the tale of a man and a woman who were out for a drive when they looked to the sky and saw a strange craft that seemed to take strange interest in them. As the husband told it, it was dark and cloudy, no moon, no stars. When we were driving by car through the village named Fredelschla, when my wife glanced at the sky out of the side window, she saw something dark suddenly covering the sky over our car. I drove the car and watched the road, so I saw nothing at this time. One minute later, a big rotating object flew down the hill over the meadow and crossed the road just over our car. We only saw the lights, which were in two concentric circles, about 10 in the outer, seven in the inner. The diameter was about 50 meters. There were no colored lights. All lights were white and as bright as the headlights of a car. The rotation speed was about 1.5 rotations per second, so it wasn't easy to watch a single light. The diameter of one light was about half a meter. The object flew at a height of 10 to 20 meters over the fields to a wood, turned by changing its inclination, just like an airplane or helicopter has to, in order to do a flying curve. It quickly returned back to the road to stop beside our car and fly at the same speed, 100 kilometers per hour. It lifted up, changing its inclination to me so I could see its amazing size. 
Two seconds later, it flew over the car to the other side and turned with the same movement to fly over the car again. This repeated five or six times on our way. Okay, this wasn't all, but should be enough. There was no sound or noise, except the motor of the car. There was no smell. The radio was turned off. The maximum speed of the object was about 400 to 500 kilometers an hour. The observed acceleration 2 to 3 G. I know my speed, 100 kilometers an hour, know the points where the object crossed the road and the distance between between these points and I calculated the rest. It's impossible that this was a projection on the cloudy sky. When I looked out the side window, I couldn't see the sky only the hill. Why do alien craft seem to take such a consistent interest in common drivers? No different from any others on the road. What are they hoping to learn about our species? And how close are they to figuring it out? Number two, the Chinese air chase. Our next story comes from a Chinese air base commander whose subordinates had an aerial encounter with a UFO that evaded and toyed with them until the jet pilots got frustrated and aggressive with the extraterrestrial craft. In the words of the colonel himself, I am Colonel Li, commander of the air base in Changzhou, where the Military Flight Training Academy is located. One day, four radar stations reported the presence of an unidentified hovering over the academy. After ascertaining that the intruder was not a military or civilian flight, I ordered six jet fighters to take off and intercept the UFO. At least 140 people on the ground saw the object. To observers at the base, the UFO first appeared to be a small pointed star, and then grew larger and larger, perhaps as it descended to a lower altitude. Witnesses described an object with a mushroom shaped dome on top and a flat bottom, covered with bright, constantly rotating lights. The crew of the interceptors consisted of a pilot and a radar officer. The two officers reported that the object clearly resembled descriptions they had seen in, in foreign science fiction films. When they got within 4,000 meters of the UFO over King County, it abruptly shot upwards, easily evading subsequent attempts to get closer. The flight crew reported that it appeared to be toying with the plane by repeatedly outdistancing it and then reappearing right over it. The pilot requested permission to fire on the UFO with the plane's automatic 20mm cannon. I denied this permission to shoot and told him to continue to pursue and observe the object. The pilot broke off pursuit at an altitude of 12,000 meters when the plane began running low on fuel. The UFO then apparently disappeared before I could order additional planes to be sent to the area. Why was this alien craft toying with the Chinese military? Was it simply a cosmic prank or an assessment of the country's combat capabilities in preparation for a potential invasion? Let us hope it doesn't come to that. Number one, the Polish Ambulance Chaser. Next on our list is a story from a Polish doctor who was in an ambulance aiding a pregnant woman on her way to the hospital when the ambulance had a close encounter that came a little too close for comfort. As the doctor related the story in his statement, I am Dr. B. Plasek. In February, a woman named Mrs. Pluta who was pregnant began to experience labor pains and the ambulance was called. She and I, plus the driver and stretcher bearer, were traveling along deserted country roads when we encountered, quite suddenly at 3.15 a.m., a huge criminal and globe that came out of the sky and paced the ambulance for about 45 minutes. As we were a team of professional medical workers, our first concern was for the safety of the mother and baby, and we considered the UFO a distracting threat. For this reason, we did not get very emotional at the time. However, when we came to a level crossing, the two attendants in their hut were simply shaking with fear at the sight. We had to halt because the road was blocked by the huge crimson ball. To be more specific, this is what I believe we saw. At first, all of us in the ambulance saw the globe as a big red ball in the sky some distance away. It looked larger than the full moon and was dark crimson in color. It immediately descended to the treetop height and hovered about 500 meters from the ambulance. One second it hung in the sky at about cloud level. The next it was seen hovering between two trees on either side of the road in the middle distance. All of us sensed the globe's ominous approach as it cruised towards us at a very low height, following the road. I was always aware that it was never exactly in the sky, but probably not very high above the ground at any time. As our ambulance approached to the level crossing, so did the globe, and we each stopped there. The globe was less than a meter above the surface of the road. I got out to speak to the crossing attendants. I said, can you see what I see? They said, we've been observing it for some time. I went to the ambulance and told the others, they cannot help us at all. They're trembling with fear. At that point, Mrs. Pluta's labor contractions became more frequent, and we felt it was urgent to get to the hospital immediately. Since our path was blocked, I decided to call the police. 
I reported that there was an obstacle in the way and asked them to come immediately. What kind of obstacle, they asked? A UFO, I replied. It was now 4.10 a.m. and all we could do was stay there and stare at the UFO. We had plenty of time to observe it in detail. Its surface displayed curved bands and stripes with a multitude of black lines traversing up and down in irregular patterns. These clear-cut markings reminded me of veins inside the human body. The ambulance driver said they looked to him like a huge net. As we watched, parts of the surface changed color. There appeared to be orange-yellow patches on the deep crimson background. Then, the globe dropped to only about 10 centimeters above the road, constantly changing colors, pulsating, but always with dull, muted tones. Suddenly, it gave off a strong white light that was so bright it reflected on the surface of the road. Out of sheer exasperation, our driver flashed his headlights at it twice. Immediately, inexplicably, it simply vanished. It was 4.15 a.m. At 6.10 a.m., Mrs. Pluta gave birth to a daughter in the hospital. A careful examination of the whole area in daylight revealed nothing. Why was this strange glowing orb showing such an interest in the ambulance? Was it simply the bright flashing lights on the ambulance roof that caught its attention? Or were they aware of the pregnant woman inside and wanted to learn more about how humans are born? We will never know for sure. Starting off, we have the original Roswell sighting. One simply cannot discuss aliens, UFOs, or anything supernatural without mentioning that fateful summer of 1947. Rancher W.W. W. Mack Brazel had found wreckage on his property in Lincoln County, New Mexico, roughly 120 kilometers north of Roswell, sometime between mid-June and early July, describing it as rubber strips, tin foil, and thick paper. The ranch had no phone and no radio, leaving Mac completely unaware of the ongoing flying saucer craze. So he gathered the debris and just pushed it under some brush to dispose of it. This was not the first instance of a flying disc spotting in the region, with several stories already being reported to the press that year. On July 5th, Mac drove into Corona, where he heard stories of silvery flying discs, and two days later on July 7th, made the decision to bring the wreckage into the sheriff's office in Roswell. The sheriff called in the Roswell Army Airfield, which assigned the Mac to Major Jesse Marcel. Mac brought Major Marcel back to the debris site and the two gathered up more pieces of rubber and tinfoil, with the Major taking the materials home. On July 8th, Public Information Officer for the Roswell Army, Walter Hott, issued a press release stating that personnel from the field's 509th Operations Group had recovered a flying disc near Roswell. On that same day, Major Marcel took the material to his base commander, Colonel William Blanchard, who reported the findings to General Roger Ramey at Fort Worth Army Airfield. Fwaf for short. General Ramey ordered that the material be flown to Fort Worth immediately, leaving Marcel to board a B-29 Superfortress to make the flight. As soon as Marcel brought the material to General Ramey's office, both Ramey and his chief of staff, Colonel Thomas Dubose, identified the material as pieces of a weather balloon kite. The weather officer on duty explained to reporters that ray wind devices were used at around 80 weather stations across the country. The balloons were attached to a six-pointed reflective device that looked like a silver star. After launch, the balloon would expand with increasing altitude before bursting at around 60,000 feet with pieces dispersing in their fall to the ground. Now, after the initial newspaper reports of 1947, the Roswell incident faded from public attention for more than 30 years, until the late 1970s, which brings us to February of 1978, when UFO researcher Stanton Friedman interviewed Major Marcel, whose statements contradicted those he made to the press in 1947, saying, they wanted some comments from him, but he wasn't at liberty to do that. All he could do was keep his mouth shut. And General Ramey is the one who discussed, or told the newspapers, the newsman, what it was and to forget about it. It's nothing more than a weather observation balloon. Of course, they both knew differently. Now, while he didn't elaborate on that statement, and I wish he did, he did deny the popular theories at the time of any bodies being found near the debris. After the United States Congressional Inquiries, the General Accounting Office launched an inquiry and directed the Office of United States Secretary of the Air Force to conduct an internal investigation. A report released in 1994 concluded that the material recovered in 1947 was likely, keyword here, debris from Project Mogul, a military surveillance program employing high altitude balloons in classified portions of an unclassified New York University project by atmospheric researchers. A scholarly consensus emerged concluding that the military had decided to conceal the true purpose of the crash device, allegedly nuclear test monitoring, and instead inform the public that the crash was of a weather balloon. The balloon had allegedly been launched from Alamogordo, I'm so sorry, Army Airfield a month earlier, carrying a radar reflector and classified Project Mogul sensors for experimental monitoring of Soviet nuclear testing. The Air Force reports were dismissed by UFO experts as being either disinformation or simply implausible. 
Yeah. Now, the scary part about all of this for me is counting how many times the government has changed its tale, expecting the general public to believe them each time. Which story do you believe? In fourth place, we have an anonymous report from 2013 from Athens, Texas. A retired military firefighter and commercial pilot, who was also a former astronaut, submitted his account of what happened around 10.15 p.m. on the evening of July 5th, 2013, to the National UFO Reporting Center, also known as New Fork. He reported that he and his family were sitting outside, and when he looked up into the sky, he observed a fairly large orange glowing orb moving rapidly overhead at around 90 degrees of elevation. A minute or two later, his whole family spotted a group of three similar objects along the same flight path as the first one. The objects allegedly gave off no sound and seemed to glow from atmospheric heating. He and his family attempted to record the objects using their iPhones, although the grainy dark video was of no evidential use. A direct quote from him reads, They moved much faster than orbital satellites, like the International Space Station, or airplanes, but much slower than meteors, and did not change brightness as a meteor would upon entering the atmosphere. So if a former astronaut and pilot has no explanation for what he witnessed, what the heck was it? In the middle of our list today, we're discussing a San Antonio spotting of seven donuts in the sky. On May 19th of 1952, an air crew flying an RB-36 reconnaissance aircraft reported spotting a series of, you guessed it, several donut shapes appearing in the sky, and were able to take photographs to accompany their incident report, which can be found in National Archives. The crew of 22 reported flying just north of Sonora when they originally spotted the phenomenon, stating that the plane was headed on a 301 degree heading at 18,000 feet with the relatively calm winds for that altitude. At 8.05 p.m., the objects appeared just to the left of the bomber's nose at a range estimated by the crew to be around 80 to 120 kilometers ahead. The objects were stacked vertically from approximately 25,000 feet to 60,000 feet. And even with all the photographs and drawings, there is still no definite answer as to what was spotted. In second place, we have the Washington flap. At 11.40 p.m. on Saturday, July 19th of 1952, Edward Nugent, an air traffic controller at the Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport, try saying that five times fast, spotted seven objects on his radar. The objects were around 24 kilometers south-southwest of the city, not following any established flight paths, and no known aircrafts were in that area. Edward's superior, Harry Barnes, a senior air traffic controller at that airport, watched the objects on the radar scope later writing that they knew immediately that a very strange situation existed. Their movements were completely radical compared to those of any ordinary aircraft they knew of. Harry had two controllers check Edward's radar, and they found it was working pretty normally. He then called the National Airport's radar-equipped control tower, and the controllers there said that they had unidentified blips on their radar screen, and that a hovering bright light in the sky was moving at speeds they couldn't understand. Now at this point, other objects appeared in all sectors of the radar scope, and when they moved over the White House and the United States Capitol, Harry then called the Andrews Air Force Base, which was located around 10 miles away. Although they reported that they had no unusual objects in their radar, an airman soon called the base's control tower to report uh-huh. The sighting of a strange object. Airman William Brady, who was in the tower, saw an object that appeared to be an orange ball of fire, trailing a tail, saying it was unlike anything he had ever seen before. Now where have I said that? Oh yeah. As William tried to alert the other personnel in the tower, the strange object took off at an unbelievable speed. On one of National Airport's runways, pilot S.C. Pierman was waiting in the cockpit of his plane for permission to take off. After spotting what he believed to be a meteor, he was told that the control tower's radar had detected unknown objects closing in on his position. Pierman observed six objects that he described as white, tailless, fast-moving lights over a 14-minute period. He was in radio contact with Harry during his sighting, and Harry later reported that each sighting coincided with a pip that could be seen near his plane. When he reported that the light streaked off at a high speed, it disappeared on their scope. Now, meanwhile, back at the Andrews Air Force Base, Staff Sergeant Charles Davenport observed an orange-red light to the south, where the light would appear to stand still, then make an abrupt change in direction and altitude, with the phenomena happening over several times. At one point, both radar centers at National Airport and the radar at Andrews Air Force Base were tracking an object hovering over a radio beacon. The object vanished in all three radar centers at the same time. At 3 a.m., shortly before two United States Air Force F-94 Starfire jet fighters, I'm really getting to know my airplanes today, <laughs> from Newcastle Air Force Base in Delaware arrived over Washington. All of the objects vanished from the radar at National Airport. 
However, when the jets ran low on fuel and left, the objects returned, which convinced Harry that the UFOs were monitoring radio traffic and behaving accordingly. Now, the objects were last detected by radar at 5.30 a.m. The government later tried dismissing the events of that day on a temperature blip, but those who were present have been adamant otherwise. In first place, we have the abduction of Betty and Barney Hill. Yeah, I know I said I'd be talking about UFO sightings today, but this event is a combination sighting and abduction that I just I couldn't leave off the list. The Hills were a married couple that lived in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Barney was employed by the United States Postal Service, while Betty was a social worker. They were active in the local Unitarian congregation, members of the NAACP, and Barney sat on a local board of the United States Commission on Civil Rights. Overall, they seem like pretty normal folks, right? Mm. The UFO sighting happened at around 10.30 p.m. on September 19th of 1961. The Hills were driving back to their home in Portsmouth from a vacation in Niagara Falls in Montreal. Just south of Lancaster, New Hampshire, Betty noticed a bright point of light in the sky that moved from below the moon in the planet Jupiter upwards to the west of the moon. While Barney was driving, Betty reasoned that she was observing a falling star. Only, it was moving upwards. Because it moved erratically and grew bigger and brighter, Betty convinced Barney to stop their car for a closer look as well as to walk their dog, Delcy. Barney obliged and stopped at a picnic area just south of Twin Mountain. Now by this point, Betty had dug out her binoculars for a closer look and described seeing an odd-shaped aircraft flashing multicolored lights travel across the face of the moon, believing it to be a flying saucer based off of stories she had heard from her sister. Now taking his turn with the binoculars, Barney thought it was just a commercial plane at first, but soon changed his mind because without looking as if it had turned, the craft rapidly descended in his direction causing him to realize something was wrong. The Hills said they continued driving on the isolated road, moving very slowly towards Franconia Notch in order to observe the object as it came even closer. At one point, the object passed above a restaurant and signal tower on top of Cannon Mountain and came out near the old man of the mountain. Betty testified that it was at least one and a half times the length of the granite cliff profile, which was 40 feet long and it seemed to be rotating. At one point, the object descended rapidly towards their vehicle, causing Barney to stop in the middle of the highway. The huge silent craft hovered at around 80 to 100 feet above the hill's 1957 Chevrolet Bel Air and filled the entire field of view in the windshield. Barry stepped away from the vehicle and moved closer to the object, which he later said was roughly the size of a huge pancake. And uh, that statement right there just made me hungry. Still using the binoculars, Barney claimed to have seen 8 to 11 humanoid figures peering out of the craft's windows, seeming to look right at him. In his report to investigator Walter Webb of the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena, NICAP, Barney described specifically that the beings were somehow not human, but humanoid. In unison, all but one figure moved to what appeared to be a panel on the rear wall of the hallway that encircled the front portion of the craft. The one remaining figure continued to look at Barney and communicated a message to him, saying, stay where you are and keep looking. Barney had a recollection of observing the humanoid forms wearing glossy, glossy black uniforms and black caps. Red lights on what appeared to be bat wing fins began to telescope out of the sides of the craft, and a long structure descended from the bottom of the aircraft. Now, the silent aircraft approached what Barney estimated was within 50 to 80 feet overhead and 300 feet away from them. Not arriving home until dawn, the Hill stated that they had some odd sensations and impulses they couldn't explain. Now, extremely confused, the Hill said they tried to reconstruct what had exactly happened the night before, but their memories were incomplete and fragmented. Notice I did a little bit of a jump there. That's because we don't know what happened. After sleeping for a few hours, Betty awoke and placed the shoes and clothing she had worn during the drive into her closet. Observing that the dress was torn at the hem, zipper, lining, and later noted a pinkish powder on her dress. Now, over the years, five different laboratories have conducted chemical and forensic analyses on the dress. This wasn't the only damage to items in their possession. Barney said that the leather strap for the binoculars was torn, but didn't remember how. The toes of his best dress shoes were scraped, and their watches were broken, and no matter what, never worked again. There were shiny, concentric circles, so similar to the rings that you would find on a tree trunk on their car's trunk, that had not been there the previous day. Betty and Barney experimented with a compass, noting that when they moved it close to the spots, the needle would whirl rapidly. But when they moved it a few inches away from the shiny spots, it would drop down. Ten days after the UFO encounter, Betty began having a series of vivid dreams, which continued for five successive nights. She stated that she experienced them with a degree of detail and intensity that she never had before. And after the fifth night, they stopped and never recurred, although they occupied her thoughts during the day. Determined to recover their lost memories, the Hills opted to partake in hypnosis sessions. Barney recalled driving the car away from the UFO, but afterwards he felt compelled to pull off the road and drive into the woods, eventually spotting six men 
standing on the dirt road. The car stalled, and three of the men approached the car, telling Barney not to fear them. He was still anxious, however, and he reported that their leader told him to close his eyes. While hypnotized, Barney said, I felt like the eyes had pushed into my eyes, a statement he would repeat each session. The best anyone has been able to rebut what happened was claiming stress and sleep deprivation as the cause of what they saw and experienced. I'll admit, I'm usually much more of a skeptic, but this seems pretty dang real to me. In fifth place, we have the Hudson Valley UFO wave. So between 1982 and 1986, around 5,000 eyewitnesses reported seeing V-shaped UFOs with multicolored lights flying near the Hudson Valley, just about an hour north of New York City. So the first sighting was made on New Year's Eve of 1982 by a retired police officer in Kent, New York, who originally thought that he was observing an airplane. And hey, it's New Year's Eve. Make of that what you will. When the craft passed above his home, he realized that it was moving far too slowly and quietly to actually be a plane. So while most of the eye witnesses described a slow-moving V-shaped UFO, other reports said the object appeared to be circular and capable of moving at fantastic speeds or disappearing altogether. Dennis Sant, a husband and father of five who had worked in local government for 17 years, described it as a very large object made of very dark gray, metallic, and uh, made no noise. The lights were iridescent, bright, and stood out in the sky, and they were three-dimensional. It looked like a city of lights that hung in the sky. So Dennis and his family followed them until he was consumed by what he described as a feeling of fright. A few Miles away, traffic screeched to a halt on Interstate 84 as a mysterious object hovered overhead. A police cruiser stopped in the middle of the road to uh, radio in about this UFO. Ed Burns, a computer engineer and senior manager for IBM, was driving home on the Taconic Parkway and claimed that his radio was suddenly consumed by static. And when he leaned over to, you know, adjust the dial, he saw the um, triangular ship. He said that the back had to be as large as a football field, and once again, there was no noise. On that same night, eyewitness reports indicated that the object was slowly moving north over the Hudson River Valley. Thirteen others saw it in Newcastle, and about ten minutes later, Ed Burns and at least twenty motorists saw it near Millwood. Ten minutes after that, the phones began ringing off the hook in the police station at Yorktown, and uh, didn't stop for hours. During another sighting, the UFO hovered about thirty feet above the Indian Point nuclear plant. The security supervisor was considering, you know, kabooming the craft down before it disappeared from sight. A home video showing a light formation above Brewster, New York was taken on June 10th of 1984 by local resident Bob Pizzuli. The footage has since been looked at by a number of photographic experts who indicate that the movement of the object on the video seems to be one rigid object and not individual objects. Now, despite eyewitness reports and photographic evidence, the phenomenon was never properly explained. In fourth place, we have Ross. Okay, look, whether you like it or not, Roswell is forever going to be associated with aliens and UFOs, and there's just so much that I wasn't going to leave it off the list. So former CIA agent Oscar Wayne Wolf claims he saw both living aliens, retrieved parts, and remains of alien ships throughout his career. So he made these claims about Area 51, claiming he caught a glimpse of an extraterrestrial spacecraft and a living alien. So once again, he saw a UFO. The 77-year-old man was speaking to UFO researcher Richard Dolan, but concerned about giving up his true identity at the time, went by the unknown. Anonymous. After he made his claim, it was then shared at the Citizens Hearing on Disclosure held at the National Press Club in Washington in 2013. So the agent is understood to have used a fake name throughout his career in the CIA, so the chances of his real name having been used in the account were never super high. He claims he worked for the CIA between 1957 and 1960, where he spent time in a military base in Southeast US where they analyzed physical evidence. Now in 2013, he thought he was about to pass away pretty soon, so he came forward for one more conversation. Yep, that one I mentioned a moment ago. He claimed that he was taken into Area 51 to look at items allegedly found and retrieved by the US government. He claimed among them was, um, yep, a flying saucer that crashed and landed in July of 1947 in Roswell, New Mexico. Gee, where have we heard that before? He stated there were live aliens there and that he was taken to the S-4 facility. In his statement, he described seeing different saucer crafts in the facility, with the first place he visited holding the Roswell craft. And it was, you know, kind of crashed up, but apparently every alien that was in it died except for a few. And uh, it was really strange because it looked like really heavy aluminum foil. And hey, that matches up with every other description we've had. He claims he viewed the autopsy film, where the colonel on screen said, uh, uh, what we've got here is a great alien that we're interviewing. This man had no idea he was going to see this film, and he claims that the alien didn't like look human as far as the skin tone and the overall shape of it and uh, the size of its head compared with a normal human. Oh, and after all this, he was obviously warned by the CNA to uh, zip it. Look, we can all admit, something landed in Roswell. Ergo, a UFO did land there. Look, did I claim it was definitely an alien craft? I didn't claim that. Somebody else did. But like, look, it's definitely something of unknown origin. 
ergo UFO. In third place we have the Go Faster video. So this video uploaded by the UFO investigative group to the STARS Academy of Arts and Sciences in March of 2018 was secured by a Freedom of Information Act request to the US government. So this video was taken in 2015 just off the east coast by an FA-18F fighter jet. You try saying that five times fast using the aircraft's onboard Raytheon AN slash ASQ-228 advanced targeting forward looking infrared pod also known as ATFLIR. I'll pretend I know what a lot of that means scientifically speaking, but a lot of big plain words. I know myself too well, I'll trip over my tongue if I try saying that more than once, so we're just going to call it uh, ATF. So ATF is designed to allow pilots to track, target, and destroy targets on the ground at ranges of up to 40 miles. It should be noted though that it's good at spotting, but not like engaging aerial targets. Alright, the video. So it's been nicknamed Go Fast by To The Stars, and it starts by explaining the various numbers and symbols that appear in the footage. Stuff like, you know, the aircraft's altitude, which was around 25,000 feet, and the fact that the ATF was pointed ahead and to the left of the Super Hornet. The reader also explains that the aircraft was traveling at 252 knots and in a 5 degree turn, and the unknown object was approximately 4.4 nautical miles away. The video shows the Super Hornet's weapon system operator repeatedly trying to acquire the UFO with the ATF's built in auto tracker, which apparently can pick out an object and keep it centered on camera. After two tries, the weapon system officer, or WSO, shouts, Whoa, got it! To which another person, assumed to be the pilot, says, Woohoo, whoa! What the bleep is that thing? The pilot asks. The WSO later says, Oh my gosh, dude. To which the pilot replies, Whoa, what is that, man? Now I know, this is where you skeptics start asking, But Alexa, how is this unknown object different from weird government aircrafts we don't know about? Well, all right. Allow me to explain, skeptics, since that's the whole point of this. For starters, the UFO does not have any kind of hot exhaust trail that would be emitted by a conventional turbine engine, so uh, it doesn't really emit any heat on the sensor. And uh, secondly, it doesn't have any visible wings or fins. So through my research, I've learned that even cruise missiles, such as the American Tomahawk or Russian Caliber, have uh, small winglets that should be visible. And other missiles, such as the Maverick anti-task missile, still have uh, stubby little fins. This UFO appears oval-like and does not appear to fly from nose first in the direction of any kind of travel. So once once again, this was a video hidden and released by the government. Hello, side eye. In second place, we have the Winston UFO. So, time to travel back to two days before my mom was born, so around 11 a.m. on April 6th of 1966, when an unexplained flying object flew around Westall High School in Melbourne, Australia. So, Mr. Greenwood was teaching his year nine science class when a girl ran into the classroom, showing that there were flying saucers hovering over the football field. The teacher and his students rushed outside, where they joined around 500 students, teachers, and locals. What he saw was an unidentified aerial craft. That was the shape one would see if you had, you know, like a saucer, slightly tipped on its side so that you saw the middle section as thicker than the ends. According to him, it performed several different actions, including hovering at different times, able to accelerate and disappear out of sight before reappearing uh, somewhere else. He said the craft was hovering 50 meters above the crowd, about 1 to 200 meters away, and clearly visible. More than 200 students and several teachers watched the UFO as it descended into a nearby field. Eyewitnesses watched the craft hovering around the school for approximately 20 minutes, and uh, yeah, described it as being a gray saucer shaped object that was about twice the size of a family car. Oh, and um, the Air Force reported that they were not in the airspace at the time of the incident. Just saying. In first place, we have the Cash Landrum incident. So on December 29th of 1980, Betty Cash, Vicky Landrum, and Colby Landrum were driving home from a night out when they saw 23 unidentified helicopters surrounding a huge diamond shaped object that was hovering above the trees. So this all started around 9 p.m. while they were driving on an isolated two lane road in dense woods and saw a light above some trees. But, you know, originally dismissed it as an airplane approaching Houston Intercontinental Airport. Hey, as someone who used to live near Pearson Airport, trust me, you'll learn to ignore planes. A few minutes later, they saw what they believed to be the same light as before, but now it was uh, closer and brighter. It said that it came from a huge diamond shaped object, which hovered at about treetop level, and that its base was expelling and that its base was expelling flame and emitting significant heat. So Vicky told Betty to stop the car, fearing they would be burned if they got closer, and both ladies originally got out of the car to examine the object, but Colby was terrified. So Vicky returned to the car to comfort him, while Betty stayed outside and was mesmerized by the bizarre sight. The object has been described as intensely bright and a dull metallic silver, once again shaped like a huge upright diamond, about the size of a water tower, with its top and bottom cut off so that they were flat rather than pointed. Small blue lights ringed the center, and periodically over the next few minutes, flames shot out of the bottom, flaring outward to create the effect of a large comb. So picture that. Every time the fire dissipated though, the UFO floated a few feet more down the road. But when the flames blasted out again, the object 
kept moving. So Betty said she had to use her coat to protect her hand from being burned by the door handle when she finally got back into the car. When she touched the dashboard, Vicky claimed her hand pressed into the softened vinyl, leaving an imprint that was evident weeks later. Investigators did cite it as proof of their account, but sadly the photos have not made their way to the internet. The group said that the object then ascended over the treetops and rose higher in the sky and that a group of helicopters approached it, surrounding it in tight formation. Like I mentioned before, the ladies counted 23 helicopters and later identified some of them as ones used by military forces worldwide. With the road now clear, Betty says she drove on, claiming to see glimpses of the object and the helicopters receding into the distance. And um, they said it lasted about 20 minutes. A Dayton police officer, Detective Lamar Walker, and his wife also claimed to have seen helicopters near the same area. The witnesses claimed that after the UFO and helicopters left, Betty took the other two home and then, you know, went to bed for the evening. But that night, they reportedly all experienced similar symptoms, although Betty to a much greater degree. Uh, they claimed that they suffered from nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, generalized weakness, and a burning sensation in their eyes. Also, like, really bad sunburn, which, ouch. Betty developed painful blisters on her skin, lost clumps of hair, and was unable to walk. She was released from a local hospital after 12 days, although her condition wasn't super better, and she later returned to the hospital for another 15 days. The Landrum's health was somewhat better, although they did suffer from that lingering weakness, skin sores, and hair loss. The duo of ladies sued the US government for $20 million, and testimony of officials from NASA, the Air Force, and the Army and Navy were given. But on August 21st of 1986, a US District Court judge dismissed their case, noting that they hadn't really proved that the helicopters were associated with the US federal government, and that military officials had tested Testified that uh, the US Armed Forces didn't really have a large diamond shaped aircraft in their possession. And uh, seeing as no government agency whatsoever possessed an aircraft resembling this UFO, the case was dismissed. Well, then, thanks for proving that this craft, whatever the heck it was, wasn't of earthly origin. And that brings us to the end of today's installment. And if I missed anything egregious, I'd recommend checking out part one before, you know, letting me know down in the comments. I swear, every time I talk about UFOs, I learn something new. Number five, something falling over Montana. It seems a week's worth of sightings of strange crafts flying over the US and Canada just wasn't enough to fill anyone's appetite for UFO content. There's always something strange afoot or something strange falling from the sky. Just this week over Billings, Montana, residents have been concerned after something mysterious fell from the sky. Footage captured recently shows trails of orange smoke, thick falling from the sky. Residents have been left in the dark without much official answer as to what had happened and if this object was connected to these other objects that have been shot down at all. Luckily, through the internet, we're able to take a look at Billings residents' thoughts and concerns through it. On a Reddit thread dedicated to the sighting, multiple users recorded some strange going ons around the city. Multiple posters reported that there was an increased military presence, with loads of reports of seeing military aircraft flying around overhead for days prior and after. Residents of Billings on a Facebook group asking questions about it noted an increase of unmarked black SUVs around the area as well. Could this be a little cover up? Do we have a development of a modern day Roswell on our hands? It's definitely a bit odd amidst all that's currently going on with strange UFO sightings. We haven't really heard so much as a word about this on mainstream news stations or maybe they think we've all just had enough of UFO coverage. Well, not us. Not Top 5 Scary. Personally, I'll be watching this with great interest. So I'll pass this one on to you guys though. What do we think exactly is going on here? Any Montana natives who might be able to help us out just a little bit? Because it strikes me as extremely odd. What do we think here? Alien craft? Recovered drone? Military testing? Glitch in the matrix? Mothman? All of these are seeming equally likely right now. And if you just cannot get enough UFO footage, hey, don't worry, neither can we. We've got videos on UFOs, aliens, NASA conspiracies and cover-ups, and tons of true stories absolutely out of this world. Not your scene? No problem. We got loads on the channel and something scary for the whole family. So take a look, subscribe, and stay scared. But stay watching this video because I got more UFOs for you. Number four, the floating beehive. Now our next clip's origins is a little bit disputed and it's a bit of a mystery as to when and where exactly it was sighted. But what most people can agree on is just how bizarre this footage is. So why don't you take a look with me. This object has been alleged to have been spotted over Denver, but it's also been alleged to have been seen over Spain. Entirely possible it's been over both. This footage has been stabilized and cleaned up as much as possible to try and provide a clear look at whatever is floating around up there and, well, I have 
no idea whatsoever. It kind of looks like a floating beehive that almost seems like it's got a combustion inside of it. It looks like something is erupting in a flame. And maybe it's just me and my own tired eyes, but it almost looks like whatever this thing is, is twisting shape and contorting midair in a way that almost makes it seem organic. Now, what I like about this clip is how different whatever this thing is looks like compared to most UFO UAP footage I've seen out there. More than a few commenters pointed out that they think it looks like a stone face with a bunch referencing that one episode of Rick and Morty with all the giant alien heads that come to Earth and, and they do the Get Swifty song. It's a good one. It's a good one to be fair. Definitely a fair comparison. Unfortunately, even with stabilization and enhancement and cleaning up the video, it's still extremely difficult to ascertain just what exactly it is we're dealing with here. Doesn't seem human in origin, and it definitely seems like it's something that could have been out of this world. So, if anyone's got any insight onto this thing, please point us towards it. Number three, the floating cigar. I got another bit of stabilized footage of something strange in the air from Reddit for you. Check out our next clip. And may I say a big thank you to the folks out there who are stabilizing their UFO footage. That is leaps and bounds ahead of what we've been doing with UFO stuff for years. No wonder we're making such strides in recent years. This clip was posted to Reddit from a user whose account has now been deleted. Hmm. Deleted by choice or silenced? Maybe clear your browser history after watching this video, just to be safe. Hey, you should probably do that anyway. I'm not judging you, but you know, make sure. Anyway, let's get to the clip, take a look. This is definitely one of the more bizarre UFO clips I've seen in a minute, and I spend literally all day in an office watching bizarre UFO clips, so I think that ought to count for something. When you think of a UFO, you kinda think of a flying saucer, little cute little dome up top, or maybe you think of like a cool sci-fi looking fighter jet, but I think very seldom do you think of a floating cylinder going through the air like this, sort of hovering in one spot menacingly. It looks like it's radiating lights, either with a seriously reflective surface, or it's producing them itself and kind of just vibing up there in the clouds. Worth noting is that across several reports of unexplained phenomena and mysterious crafts reported by Air Force and Navy pilots, one of the more repeated ones was strange cylindrical craft and a comparison very frequently was made of a floating cigar. And whatever this is certainly does look like a floating cigar, enough to give me a bit of pause. But I also read hundreds upon hundreds of alien stories and watch UFO videos all day, so I'm more of a tinfoil hat conspiracist than the average duck. You know what this kind of reminds me of though? Is that little gadget in Men in Black that they use to erase everybody's mind when they see something they're not supposed to? Looks a ton like that to me. Maybe that was the point of this thing. A mass amnesiac designed to quickly flash over the population and erase any recent memories of UFO and UAP spottings, that or it's just like a weird weather balloon. That's what it ends up being like 99.9% .9 of the time. Number two, floating triangle. Now our next clip is another one shared to Reddit and hey, while I'm here, shout out to the UFO subreddit for making finding clips of alien crafts just so much easier than it was a few years ago. You gotta love the information age. Now, keep your eyes peeled for this next one coming up because it is a serious doozy. I had to do a little bit of digging for this clip, put on my newsman fedora, try and get down to business. But from what I could turn up, this footage was captured somewhere soaring over Guatemala City. In the video, we can see what is a pretty clear triangle shape flying through the air with blinding bright lights casting down onto the surface. This clip to me has that feel of UFO footage, you know, the vibe. It looks a bit like something that could have come out of a movie, which does almost make me feel like maybe it's too good to be true. Of course, there's also the possibility that whatever I'm looking at right now is just a very advanced spy plane seen from down below and giving off a very unique silhouette. Like the cigar clip before it, black triangle UFOs are one of the more commonly reported descriptions of UFOs. In fact, even on the comments of this clip are several commenters stating that they've all seen similar things. Now, obviously take that with a grain of salt of course because they're YouTube comments. No offense to my beloved YouTube commenters, you know I love you. But it does help paint the picture that whatever is happening has happened more than once. Now my theory for this clip is I think this most likely is something military and advanced and if I wanted to kind of get out there with my theorizing, which I do, it could potentially be something reverse engineered from recovered technology. Luis Elizondo, who I mention in these videos all the time, is a former US intelligence agent and a notable figure in the world of UFO discussions. And he's claimed multiple times that he knows that the US has reverse engineered craft 
from recovered UFO parts and has insisted a few times that the craft in particular he is referring to is triangular in nature. Could this be what he's alluding to? Completely possible. Time will tell of course. And number one, Hawaii re-entry. I try to save the best clip for last and I sure hope this doesn't disappoint. If that last one from Guatemala didn't have you convinced that there's tech out there we can't explain, why don't you try this on for size? This recently captured footage came to us from a Redditor, one gold breadfruit. Thank you. Take a look at this bizarre experience they caught pulling into Maui, Hawaii. If you're watching this on your phone, crank the brightness just for a few seconds and see if that helps out a bit. It almost seems like what we're looking at is something huge being rendered invisible by some cloaking technology, maybe on a loan from the predator. What's throwing me most about this clip is that just the size of whatever is being caught on camera here. Most UAP or UFO videos, it's pretty difficult to figure out how large something is when you're looking at a blurry dot in the sky. But here, it's almost like we're face to face with what looks like a massive craft. Some commenters have suggested that what you're looking at right now is a satellite re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, citing a particular event in 2008 as proof, though the footage is dated from 2020, so not entirely sure. Some other commenters argued that it didn't look like something re-entering the atmosphere as there was no visible trails of any kind on the craft as it entered. I can't say too much is about that. I am not a rocket scientist even remotely. Just look at me. I'm not giving off rocket scientist vibes. I'm a YouTuber and I'm a UFO enthusiast. If you have some insight, I am definitely all ears. But until then, I'll probably just be watching these clips over and over again, pausing frame by frame in a dark basement like I'm Agent Mulder sitting alone trying to get to the bottom of this. I just want to believe, darn it. Number five, above Las Vegas. Our first clip coming up today comes to us from Las Vegas, Sin City and possibly a place of close encounters. Now I wouldn't outright ignore a UFO sighting just because it came from Las Vegas, but it's definitely worth remembering that anyone recording this clip probably was having a lot of fun and you know doing some things and probably just lost a down payment on their house so take it all with a grain of salt as you would any other UFO clip. Like most UFO clips it's pretty difficult to make out what's happening exactly but up in the sky we can see something moving through the cloud that sure doesn't look like a bird, a plane, or Superman. We can see a red ring looking down ominously on the streets below like the eye of Sauron. From what we can make out the shape looks to be gigantic. You know, impossible to really ascertain from a street level, but yeah, it's big. It is definitely big. Now, I love the feel of this clip, like the aliens flying overhead feels very cinematic to me, but the skeptic in me has to acknowledge with how many bizarre lights must be going off at any given time down on the strip, it's not impossible that this clip is just a trick of the light, but I can't deny that the clip does look good. Would I bet on this being an alien? I'm not sure, but since it is in Vegas, I'm certain I could find someone who would bet on it. Trouble, of course, though, is I feel like even if an alien was spotted like walking around Las Vegas in broad daylight, no one would ever be allowed to talk about it since, you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. It even extends to UFO sightings. Now, if you missed the first two parts of our recent UFO sighting vids, you have got to go catch up. And if that still isn't enough for you, we have got alien videos all over the channel. So click that subscribe button, ring that little bell for video notifications, and don't miss a single frame of evidence from us. Stay subscribed, informed, and scared. Number four, in Brazil. For our next one, we are gonna be headed out to Brazil. And wow, I have absolutely no idea what is going on in this clip, but it is definitely bizarre. Let's get some eyes on it. Can you take a look at this for me? I'd say what on earth is that, but I think it is extremely clear that whatever is happening in this clip is not of this earth. It looks like a ball of like molten hot lava just existing, vibing, floating along in the countryside. It almost looks like it's dripping too, which I think is interesting. Could this be like sparks flying off of a craft or some technology infinitely too advanced for little old me to possibly understand? A commenter on the video made an interesting comparison that I will include here too for posterity, noting that the dripping effect reminded one commenter of the described UFO in the Rendlesham Forest incident, which was purported to have also been dripping something out of it as it flew which resembled magma. And if you don't know the Rendlesham Forest incident, we've covered it a couple times on the channel. Can't remember the exact titles of the videos, but I definitely have talked about it. The entity moves very erratically, so it's hard to even guess what this could be. The light seems to be like 
pulsing out of it. Usually you can always entertain the possibility in any UFO clip that, you know, maybe it's a drone or a weather balloon, but for this one, I am out of ideas and I am more likely to say it's a demon than anything else. So I am officially turning this one over to you guys, comment section. If you can crack this case, you are more than welcome to be my guest and please let me know if you've got any theories or ideas about this one because I am fresh out of them. Number three, Guadalajara. Our next video is going to be taking us down to Mexico in Guadalajara specifically. Originally posted to TikTok, the video is pretty clear, refreshingly, for UFO clips. You can see something bizarre flying around in the sky with a series of lights flashing in a circular, almost like honeycomb-esque pattern hovering above the city. Surveying, just checking things out, got lost and should have taken a right turn at Albuquerque. A commenter on the video shot down the idea of it being an airplane, which I know most of you are probably thinking while you're watching this, saying that they've worked in an airfield their whole life and they've never seen an aircraft that had lights on it like that and it didn't have a beacon on it, a giveaway that it wasn't a plane. Now some had suggested a possibility that it could be a collection of drones all flying together in unison. But for what purpose, I could not tell you. A very complicated hoax, a military operation, just for kicks. I think what's getting me about this clip is that the UAP flies in like a perfectly straight line, but isn't a plane. I don't know enough about drones to dispute this, but I can't imagine it'd be easy to get a ton of drones all moving in a perfect formation like that, but maybe it actually is very easy and I'm just ignorant. All I know is that this clip is definitely weird, and I've watched it approximately a hundred times, pausing and yelling at my editor to zoom and enhance, like I'm a CSI guy. If anyone in the comments can translate what's being said in the video, maybe that'll help out. Although I imagine it's mostly people just saying, look at that weird thing in the sky, what is that? And I feel like you've probably got more than enough of that from me in this video already. Number two, South Africa. Our next clip is down in Zambia, South Africa, and it honestly looks like an arrival scene that came out of a movie. We can see four blindingly bright lights slowly coming forward in the night sky. Sky, offering absolutely no clue as to what this could possibly be. Now, the usual drone theory is definitely possible. We can consider this could be four drones moving in unison or something, but I don't know. They just seem, it seems too perfect to be drones. Now, since it is in South Africa, I would be more than a little concerned that this could possibly be the prawns touching down. And I hope we all learned a very important lesson from District 9 about how to treat our alien friends. The clip in question also features an amazing narration, and I don't know how much of it we're allowed to include in here. A lot of you are so smart, you're so intelligent. Tell me what this is. These things are so aligned. How does this happen? But you can hear the camera guy just absolutely going off in like the funniest rant about how no one can explain what he's seeing. And if you'd like to come down and explain it for him, he includes his like GPS coordinates and everything. It is so funny, definitely worth looking up later. Now, some skeptics in the comment section have pointed out that this could very well be as easily explainable as lights from a crane or a lamppost on a football field or something. And yeah, it definitely does seem possible, but I'd like to see the same location in the daytime, you know, see what's happening there. But it could also be something completely mysterious touching down and coming forward. And if you're so smart, you explain it to him. That's what he says in the thing. It, it's so funny. And number one, Tom DeLong sighting. Now I'm including this next one for a couple reasons. First and foremost, it's a very impressive clip of a UFO flying around and when you watch it in a second you'll understand where I'm coming from. But secondly, because it was shared by Tom DeLong, and I just love the fact that after selling out who knows how many warped tours, the Blink-182 frontman spends his days looking for all the small things in the sky. That's a little Blink-182 joke for you. <laughs> in his Instagram post, Tom writes that this clip changed the world. I'll let you decide for yourself. Now, for what it's worth, this this clip really is something. DeLong included several alterations to the little clip. You know, we got some thermals, enhancements, stabilization, and yet none of it really helps too much at being able to figure out just what exactly this is, if not a flying saucer. We can see this thing zipping around in the sky and then it seemingly activates like warp speed because it just vanishes in the sky. Going back to the mothership, I guess. Now, 
If you're looking at this and you think maybe it looks a little bit too good and you're like CGI radar is starting to go off, you are not entirely alone because some commenters on this clip said that it looks too good and were suspicious. Doubly so because, well, Tom DeLong has spoken rather openly about his hopes to eventually turn his To The Stars research group into a multimedia empire including movies and television and all sorts of stories to broadcast the truth. So it wouldn't be completely inconceivable that perhaps this could be faked. Although if you really did see a UFO, wouldn't it look fake to your eyes, you know? It would look like something literally out of this world. And your brain would probably be scrambling a bit trying to make any sense of it whatsoever. One has to wonder, do you think there's ever been any like totally genuine UFO footage that has been dismissed and labeled as fake CGI because it just looks too perfect? Like imagine we finally find aliens and we just... Number five, alien gate crashers. Our first story comes from a man in Zimbabwe who was asleep one night when he woke up to see an alien craft that seemingly had no trouble passing through solid objects. This is his recollection of the event. My name is Johan Reitman, and I farm near Feathersdorp, 150 kilometers from Herer. I am 31 years old. On the 5th of February, I woke up from a bad dream just after midnight, when I heard a car go past. I got up and looked out of the bedroom window, which faces the front of the farm. I watched as two cars passed each other, a strange sight, as there are usually few vehicles to be seen, and none at night. One car pulled into my gate, and I thought immediately, Oh no, those guys are coming to pinch my new engine on the borehole. I rubbed my eyes and face to make sure I wasn't still asleep. I looked at the car again. It was long and wide, and made a low humming sound. I could see lights at the back, a row of red lights and a front light which shone high enough to illuminate the treetops. This car or object stopped at my gate for a good 30 seconds and then drove on as if the gate had been opened and that was it. It was gone. I took my torch, my rifle, four farm workers and my dogs and we went out to the gate. Despite the fact that it had just rained, there were no tire tracks or human tracks on the road. As we approached the gate, I could feel heat coming up from the surface of the road, a really oppressive heat radiating from the ground. Even my ears felt flushed with heat, and my workers and I were soaked with perspiration. It was about 12.30 by then, so when we found nothing further, we all went back home. It was only the following morning that it occurred to me that when we reached the gate, it was closed. This meant that the car had disappeared through a closed gate because they had been watching it when it disappeared and the gate hadn't moved. The next day I sent one of the farm workers to fetch some sheep who were lost in the bush and on his way back he said he saw an object straddling the road. By the time he reached the spot it was gone but strangely enough the sheep would not walk over to the area where the object had been. Instead they divided around it. Number four, a UFO crash in Greece. Our next report comes from Georg N. Pantaloas, who interviewed the witnesses of a UFO crash in Megas Platinos in Greece. The following is quoted directly from his report. At 0300 hours that night, shepherds and some villagers observed a small group of five to six UFOs approaching the area from the north. One of them had an unstable flight and seemed to be having a problem. Strange lights came out of the UFO's fuselage, but without any noise. As an eyewitness, Shepard Trantos Karatranos told me, suddenly the treble UFO lost altitude and crashed to the ground at a distance of about 500 meters away from him. He didn't hear any noise, but a fire started burning the bushes. Trantos was very afraid to get closer and stayed in his position watching the phenomenon. The rest of the UFOs in this group stopped over the accident spot, and two of them landed near the destroyed UFO. In a few minutes, the fire in the bushes was terminated. For the rest of the night till dawn, there was an unusual traffic from the ground to the flying UFOs. Light spots went up and down, probably collecting the pieces of the destroyed UFO and any bodies of the crew. They finished the collection before sunrise, and after that, 
the rest of the UFOs took off and were lost in the sky. Meanwhile, all the villagers had been awakened and had seen the whole operation. Early in the morning, the villagers went out to the spot where all of this had occurred, and they saw on the ground a burned oval shape in the ground, with a cut pine tree in the center, and very small metallic pieces and pieces of wires around the tree. Some of the people, like Aragus Alavantes, collected a number of these pieces. One strange thing was that at the edges of the burned oval, the fire stopped like it had been cut by a knife. Some hours later, a team of Hellenic Air Force personnel came into the area and told the villagers that this was nothing serious. Maybe a Soviet satellite crashed or a plane. They took some pieces of the UFO too and left the area. Argaris sent a piece of the UFO to the Space Research Institute in Brussels. That's the story. If you think that we need more information, we can get more, because I have a very good relationship with the people in the village of Magus Plantos. You see, they don't like to talk a lot about the story, because they are afraid that someone will think they are crazy or something. Number three, an unexpected police sighting. The next story on our list was related by a Lithuanian police chief, whose officers witnessed strange UFO activity that resulted in him having to make the press rounds to reassure the people of his country. As he put it, I am chief of police in villainous Lithuania. Recently, I had to appear on the radio to explain that two policemen who had reported seeing something extraordinary were known to me to be reliable witnesses and were of sound and honest mind. There has been considerable public anxiety about this matter, arising from what I consider to be media hysteria about their official report. Earlier this year, the entire police force was put on alert. The two officers stated that they had observed a round, shining object on the main route at around half past midnight, 10 kilometers from the capital city near the village of Nemegis. The object was flashing bright light and hovered 20 to 30 meters above the ground. At the same time, you could hear a strange sound, like electric electricity crackling, they said. The two men approached the UFO after watching it for almost half an hour. When they were some 50 meters from it, the object started to move upwards and away from them into the air, then accelerated towards the town. At that point, an alert was put out and van loads of rapid reaction force police and tracker dogs arrived on the scene, but the UFO had disappeared. We conducted official tests on the area's ground composition, measuring the air's radiation, and took sound recordings. The grass in the area for 10 meters around where the UFO was reported to have been sighted was visibly flattened. Number two, a Swedish abduction. Our next tale is from a Swedish man who was walking home one night when he suddenly saw a strange light that seemed to instantly transport him to his destination. The following is his story in his own words. Call me Anders. In early March, I left a local election celebration and decided to walk home, about five kilometers away. I had a few glasses, but was still sober. It was a starry, moonlit night, and I decided to take a shortcut that led over a hill. As I was climbing, a bright light came from behind, which I thought was a fast car. I moved off the road onto the grass verge, and then I realized it was not a car. The light passed right over me, almost touching my head very quick. Then, I found myself immediately outside my home, my home in Lindholmen, ringing the doorbell frantically. When my wife opened the door, she saw that I had a wound in my forehead and my cheek was burnt. The next day, I telephoned the National Defense and was interviewed in detail by two investigators. They told me there were other witnesses. A woman cyclist reported seeing a light at the same time I did, and a couple driving nearby saw what they thought was a new water tower with extremely bright lights shining out of its windows. Later, they realized there was no water tower at that spot. I still have a scar on my face to this day. Whenever I touch it, I feel a tingling sensation and I experience a wonderful feeling of oneness, of unity, with the Earth itself. Number one, a strange sighting in Uruguay. Our final tale of the day comes from a police chief in Uruguay who was out with friends when the sights he saw made him a believer. In his own words, I am police chief Miguel Costa, in charge of the force at Melo, Uruguay. On March 10th, I was driving with two friends, Armando and Maria Passa, along a gravel road near Tacurembo, when a huge oval disc loomed out of the early morning darkness. It was enormous and gleaming, with yellow and orange lights. I stopped the car and purely on impulse flashed the headlights. All of a sudden, the UFO appeared to hesitate and zigzag up and back as if answering our call. When I started up again, it was following us. I again stopped the car and flashed my lights. Again, 
The UFO appeared to waver in reply. We drove on once more along the twisting road, and the UFO stayed with us, always about half a kilometer away. This went on for almost 50 kilometers. That's when the strangest thing of all occurred. We were all glued to the windows, watching as the disc suddenly shot towards the ground as if it was going to crash. It stopped 50 to 100 meters from the Earth, and we could clearly see its round, dome-like shape with a large flat plate underneath. There was a slight ring of cloud around the dome. The top was reddish, but the bottom was a brilliant glowing white. Inexplicably, the new position of the UFO made us all uneasy, so we turned around and headed back to Takarambo, the nearest town. The blazing lights of the UFO remained at a constant distance behind us. I pulled in under some trees, hoping to evade it. We then observed a second disc traveling some distance behind the first. They never touched, but they seemed to be traveling together. They seemed to maneuver up and down until clouds started to form. Then they passed over the top of the clouds and lit them up like a halo. Then they faded, getting smaller and smaller until they disappeared at dawn. They had been with us for 90 minutes. We were all speechless, as we could not believe what we had witnessed. I myself have never believed in UFOs, but I do know that this incident revealed something rare and inexplicable. Number 5. Las Vegas Body Cam My dear ghouls, things are heating up in the sky lately, and the whole world is coming down bad with alien fever. If you're a UFO enthusiast, the odds are very good you've heard a thing or two about the recent sighting in Las Vegas. That's kind of building up to be a modern day Roswell with all the conspiracy and cover up allegations. NASA's planetary defense officer, which side note, I did not know was a real job, told Motherboard, a branch of Vice News, that a green fireball observed last month was not a UFO, but rather a small meteor less than a meter in size that landed smack dab in somebody's backyard. Now the Las Vegas police officers who responded to the call say they didn't find any aliens in a manhunt, or alien hunt I suppose is probably more accurate, but they do hope to find them in the future, citing the city's close proximity to Area 51 as a source of speculation. Now the problem is that footage went wildly viral over the internet when a police officer's body cam was uploaded. We've got a little bit of this footage for you here today. It's kind of hard to make anything out of it, like most blurry alien footage, but it's fun to let our speculations run wild, and this TikToker seems adamant that you can see an alien over one of the cop's shoulders. Personally, I think it does look a bit just like a light or like a headlight or something, but you let me know what you feel like you see. The case has been captivating, with the callers, the 911 callers, claiming that they saw tall, non-human entities in their backyard with big glowing eyes looking at them. So what do you think, my fair and trusted viewers? Do you think these aliens got lost on the way to Area 51 to meet their friends and crash landed in somebody's backyard? Or was it just a meteor? Or did the aliens come from the meteor and the meteor itself was the UFO? Truly, who is to say? Who is to know? Hopefully we find out soon enough and when we do, you better believe that I'll be the first to tell you. And if you're looking for way, way, way more videos about all things UFO and alien. Oh my good gosh, do we have a lot of that on the channel for you to enjoy. Everything from conspiracies, cover-ups, to UFO sightings, we've got it. If you're sick of hearing about Little Green Man, we've got all sorts of things on crime, conspiracy, everything scary, it's on top five. So hit subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell as well, and don't miss a single thing, but you get to do that at the end of this video for me, okay? Because I got four more UFO sightings coming up for you right now. Number four, the Pentagon. We are at a truly exciting time to be an enthusiast of UFOs and aliens. It feels more so than any other point in human history that the discussion around aliens and UFOs is leaving the fringe sciences and starting to become accepted commonplace by respectable employed people, not just folks wearing tinfoil. Recently, the Pentagon released a video of a reported UFO zipping around near an Air Force drone and revealed footage to quote the Pentagon, everyone thought was truly anomalous, which is government speak for we don't know what the f this is. At the time, the object appeared to be moving with something propelling it forward, but a later determination would show that it didn't which baffled and puzzled the analysts, as usually something propels you forward in the air. Now this hearing was very interesting for a few reasons, but foremost it allowed us a little bit of insight into how government agencies go about treating UFO sightings. We learned they categorize them first by what they most likely are, starting with the obvious things like planes or balloons, which account for like 99% of all UFO sightings. And then when it's something they truly cannot immediately identify, they prioritize where was it found? How was the object maneuvering? Does it seem like it's being driven? 
control? Does it seem as if it has a payload? Does it have something attached to it? The hearing started by saying that the Pentagon currently doesn't believe that they have any definitive proof of extraterrestrial life on Earth, but concluded by saying that we'll be getting another disclosure document coming soon, possibly even as early as July. So we have huge exciting things on the horizon coming up in July, and I'm not just talking about the Barbie movie. <laughs> Number three, Jorge Ortega. Is it just me or are things getting crazier? Maybe I'm watching more UFO footage as part of my job, but it seems like every day we see more UFO sightings, like they're doubling, tripling over what they used to be. Yeah, admittedly, everybody carries a camera in their back pocket now, but it does seem like more people are checking out the planet. Ever since that streak in February, I feel like it's been an arms race for the coolest UFO footage. While pilot Jorge Ortega captures what some are describing as the best UFO footage ever, but I'll let you be the judge of that. He uploaded the video online where it was found by an account called The Hood's Finest, where the clip went wildly viral on Instagram. Thank you, The Hood's Finest, one of the most trusted sources of journalism in these dark times. Let's take a look. It's definitely mysterious. That much I can say with complete confidence. It's really hard to tell what that was, but the way it speeds forward without any visible exhaust does make it seem highly, highly suspicious. You can't make any details on that craft at all. Now, Artiega claims this was the most frightening experience of his life, and it's really not hard to see why. A circular, spherical, strange object flew directly in front of his plane, then whizzed by his window. Whizzed, like, you know what I meant. I shouldn't have used that word. Artiega and his co pilot were flying towards Santa Fe when they first noticed the strange object coming towards them. The pilots believed that whatever they saw was non human in nature, and definitely not a balloon or another aircraft. Ortega claims that the aircraft was traveling at an incredible speed of 300 kilometers an hour. I don't know how many miles an hour that is for your Americans. You guys are going to have to calculate that on your own. With the temperature at the time of the flight falling close to 5 degrees Celsius. With all that being said, it seems less likely that it's a bird or a balloon and possibly something far, far more mysterious. As always, I love to hear your guys' opinion on stuff like this, so feel free to debate away in the comments if you think you've got an idea or an angle on this that I'm not seeing. We need as many eyes on this as possible. Of course, you can also just, I don't know, tell me something nice about your day. Tell me something that made you smile today. I love hearing about that too. Number two, Chad Underwood. I think by now, if you're subscribed to the channel, and I hope you are, you've heard a thing or two about the Tic Tac UFOs that the Navy released videos of. And a lot of ways, these videos were kind of one of the first big steps for this recent surge of UFO, UAP stuff being taken kind of seriously, with these baffling videos leaked by the Navy that no one could explain. Although they were taken years and years ago, back in the halcyon days of 2004, the pilot who took the video has rarely spoken out about his experiences at all, for the understandable fear that he'd be lumped in with, quote, the little green men crazies that are out there. Well, I'm one of them, Chad Underwood, and I'm ready to believe you. Oh, Chad Underwood, that's the guy who filmed it. I don't know if I said that before. The story of the Tic Tac UFO began on November 10th, 2004, when radio operator Kevin Day reported seeing something odd and slow flying around the San Diego coast. It was moving approximately 140 miles an hour at a height of nearly 30,000 feet, so definitely not like any bird that I've ever heard of, and probably unlikely to be balloons. Commander David Fravor of the Black Aces identified the 40-foot-long white oblong-esque object hovering and exhibiting no exhaust propulsion, but seemingly darting itself forward at impossible velocities. It was Chad Underwood's footage that got shared and went viral. Via infrared camera pods mounted on the plane, we get sightings of these mysterious Tic Tacs in action. And I wish I had something different to tell you for the end of this point, something a bit more dramatic and exciting, but nearly a decade later and we are still absolutely no closer to understanding just what happened here, what's happening in these videos, what these crafts are, but maybe we'll get there soon. Like I said, there's supposed to be a document coming up in July that's gonna reveal all sorts of new research and information the Pentagon's been working on, and maybe that will be the big one, or maybe it'll just also be nothing, like it usually turns out to be. But who knows? And number one, California Army Base. We all wonder if military bases are hiding advanced technology, right? Like all of us do that, it's not just me. Like what kind of secret could be buried underneath Area 51. Wouldn't you want to know? It definitely seems like visitors from other worlds are just a bit curious too, as there was a mass sighting of possible UFOs out in the California desert, right above a military base, one Camp Wilson. Was it a sign of visitors scouting out the area, or technology from within being reverse engineered by the American government? 
Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp are a pair of ufologists, and they revealed the footage on their podcast, saying that the video and photos were shot all the way back in April 2021, but didn't appear until now, where a series of mysterious lights manifested above the base for nine minutes, prompting the Marines to launch a significant air and ground response. You know, just in case this turned out to be like an Independence Day kind of sitch. The Marines fired flares at the UFO and the craft disappeared just before the flares could illuminate what they were. Classic, that's just like every single UFO story, you know, right before the good part. The hosts of the podcast go on to say that there was no media coverage whatsoever of the incident. I mean, I don't really remember anybody talking about this in April 2021, but I also don't remember April 2021, so I'm not a trusted source. But since then, nothing really has come out about it. They got the tip from someone at the base, from a person who was pretty high up, they quote. The tip was that there was more to this story that was being led on. Now, some viewers, some astute alien fans, have pointed out a noticeable similarity between this incident and the Phoenix Light event in 1997, where a series of strange lights hovered over the city of Phoenix, witnessed by multiple people in the city, but unknown to everyone and to this day, unsolved. So what happened here? Just one more mystery we'll never get an answer to? I'm not sure. Number five, Japan sighting. Our first sighting comes to us from Japan, where a man looked out his window one day in time to see an amazing sight, only for it to disappear before he could get his family to look at it. The following is his story as he related it. My name is Tatsumi Tanaka. I am 42 years old and the owner of a beauty parlor in Anaka City, Gunma Prefecture. Last Sunday, I saw a UFO, and it was the first time such a shocking matter happened to me. I never believed that I would have such an experience, but surprisingly, it happened to me. I was on the second floor of my house and casually looking out the east window when I caught sight of a white object, rather big, the shape impossible to describe, rising softly and perpendicularly from the surface of the ground. We see Mount Akagi in the northeast direction, and it was in this direction that the UFO rose, but I could not tell how far away it was. It was about 10 o'clock in the morning. I wondered what it was. I thought at first sight it must be an airship or a balloon. I strained my eyes to see better, but could not understand what it was. After rising straight up, it stayed for a while at a constant height and seemed to become blurred outside. It then turned into the oval shape that is familiar to us from TV or magazines. It was the same object, but not the same shape as before, but the outline was not clear. Soon after, it moved to the right at fast speed. It looked like a low altitude flight, but it all happened so quickly, and then it just disappeared into the cloud blue sky. I was so shocked, I fell out of my mind. This thing was so huge, but it disappeared just in a moment. I tried to explain what I saw to my wife and child who were right beside me, but I couldn't. I just pointed and could only shout out in surprise. My wife was very annoyed and said that everyone cannot see UFOs, only some people do and some don't. By then it had disappeared. I was so excited that I went outside with my daughter and searched the sky but it was too late. I still can't believe I have had such an experience. I will never forget that movement and that speed, something beyond common sense. It means to me that things exist that we don't understand. Number four, New Zealand. Next, we have a story from New Zealand where a woman was enjoying a nice day in her yard when she saw a craft unlike anything she'd seen before. This is her story in her own words. My name is Edith Perkins. At 8.30 p.m. Monday, I was doing some chores in our backyard. This is in Bexley, just north of Christchurch, South Island, New Zealand. I saw something in the sky, like a capsule or cigar-shaped object. At first, it had a silver whitish body with a darker gray forked tail. While I looked at it, it was just overhead, seeming to be coming closer. I was facing west. The rounded edges front and back of the object called my attention to it initially. Its size appeared to be 10 centimeters long if held at arm's length. I suppose it was about 30,000 feet high, but it seemed very puzzling that there was no jet trail behind it. So. I went indoors to fetch a pair of 7x35 binoculars. My husband joined me and our home care nurse. As we three watched, a very bright light completely covered the object. It did not happen as a flash of light. It seemed to start up and then finish with a burst of light. I was seeing a different rear design on the craft with a forked end to it, and the color was now dark gray. Another burst of light occurred, and the object presented a rim all around the craft, with either intermittent colored lights on the rim, or else the rim was composed of rotating colored lights. These were 
varying tones of reddish orange. This object then flew out over Pegasus Bay towards the northeast. Number three, Papua New Guinea. Our story from Papua New Guinea involves a young man whose entire community was brought to a chilled hush when a strange craft came to town for a closer look at humanity. As he put it, my name is Alex James. I live in Pilla Pilla Community, New Guinea. About 7 p.m. last Tuesday, I went with four friends to Pilla Pilla Community School for rugby practice. We were going back to our village after dark when we saw some bright lights approaching. There were a lot of people about, some coming back from bathing, and others sitting around eating their dinners. When they saw the light, they all ran inside and locked their doors, except for a few of us who just stood and stared. As the UFO approached us, we heard no sound. The street lights all dimmed just like a torch when the batteries are failing. It hovered over the coconut palms and looked huge. It was oblong in shape. It passed slowly overhead. My friends and I were almost frozen as we watched it. We felt as though we could not move or speak, because we were so shocked by the sight. The bottom of the UFO was oblong shaped, with very bright lights all around the edges. At the top was a pyramid-like shape, with lights around it also. Just bright white, no colors. It was huge and took over 30 minutes to pass by. We checked the time. When it was hovering over us, it seemed to be as bright as day. The whole place was lit up like bright daylight. That's how bright its lights were. Then the object just disappeared in the direction of the mountains near Vuvu. Number two, Zimbabwe sighting. Our next tale comes to us from a journalist named Cynthia Hind, who interviewed a teenager named Lloyd, who witnessed not only a strange craft, but alien life forms when he was awoken late one night. The following is quoted directly from her report. At between 1 and 1.30, he woke up, and because he knew it would be quiet at that hour, he decided to do some studying for his exams. Whilst thus engaged, he heard a clicking sound. It continued for some minutes, so Lloyd decided to check what it could be. He opened the front door and looked outside. He could hear the sound coming from up the road, and when he glanced in that direction, he witnessed something very strange. He quickly went outside and hid behind a hedge to get a better view. He was able to observe a small figure about a meter high, with a head like a rugby ball, dressed in white overalls. On its back, the creature had a small satchel, attached to which was an aerial with a flashing red light. Lloyd was terrified. He told me he was asphyxiated with fear and ran back into the house, jumped into bed, and covered himself with his blankets. He slept fitfully for the rest of the night. At six the next morning, he went to look where the creature had walked and found several footprints which he could not identify and which he attributed to the creature. When he arrived at school, he told his friends about seeing a ghost in the night, but one of his friends suggested that it was a UFO. Lloyd is now under the impression that the creature is called a UFO. Number one, Australia sighting. Our final tale of the day comes from a man by the name of Patrick Knowles. He was on a road trip with his family when they discovered a close encounter more terrifying than he could have possibly imagined. In his own words, it happened on January 20th. My mother, two brothers, and I were driving from Perth to Melbourne. We were going to drive straight through in shifts, and we planned to cross the desert at night when the heat wasn't so bad. By 2.30 a.m., them, we were in the Nullarbor Plain. We stopped for petrol and switched drivers. Sean was driving, and I was in the front seat next to him. The road was empty. Suddenly, we saw a bright yellow light up ahead, and Sean slowed down. As we got closer, the yellow light seemed to be emanating from an egg-shaped object hovering just above ground level. We thought we might be seeing things, but then a caravan passed, going the other way, and it swerved sharply to avoid the luminous egg. The closer we got to it, the more we realized it wasn't a normal vehicle or a road signal or anything like that. Sean swerved to avoid it, and we continued on, leaving it behind. Suddenly, the object started towards us. It appeared to accelerate with tremendous speed. We drove on, and it literally chased us. The faster we went to get away from it, the faster this object went after us. I reckon we reached a speed of 125 miles per hour, but it caught up in a matter of seconds. Then Sean made a sudden U-turn and headed back west in the direction of the petrol station. The UFO also turned around. I don't know how the hell it was flying, because it didn't have any wings, or anything like wings. It just kept coming after us. Sean made another fast U-turn, heading back towards Melbourne again, but the UFO turned as well and kept pace with the car. In the back seat, everyone was scared. The dogs started barking and whining. Then, suddenly, we were hit. It shot a beam of light out and punctured our back tire. The back tire was on fire. We started sliding across the road. I realized if we braked, we would have to confront the UFO, but Sean didn't have any choice. Then it landed on the roof of the car and picked the car up. It lit up the car like a microwave. The heat was intense. Our hair was standing straight up, and we felt really funny, like we were being dehydrated. It was awful, frightening, 
like our brains were being sucked out. My fear was that I would be pulled out of my body. I put my hand out of the window and touched something spongy that burned my hand. I thought we were going to die. You could actually feel the car rising in the air. The car began to fill with a thick black fog. It was so hot, and all this soot, this junk started covering us. Our voices started changing. You know how a tape deck sounds when the batteries start to go flat. That's what it was like. Then I passed out. I came to when I heard a tremendous noise, like a bang, and our car suddenly dropped back to earth. Dawn was coming up. The thing just flew away, and that was the last we saw of it. I had to change the tire, and we tried to clean out the black soot. There were marks on the roof of the car. As soon as we could, we drove fast to the nearest roadhouse. We were too shocked to talk for a while. Then we realized we had lost a couple hours time during the incident. We called the police. The funny thing was, they were already looking for us. Someone, maybe the people in the caravan we passed, had phoned the police anonymously. Their report states that they witnessed our car being picked up off the road and shaken violently. They noticed the car was covered in black ash. The police inspected our car and noted the ash, the bad smell, and the dents on the roof. They were convinced something had occurred. They took us to the hospital. Number 5. The Crafts Shot Down It has been a huge year for UFO enthusiasts like yours truly. Earlier, we got the release of the UAP reports from the Pentagon, which were basically the wildest documents in US government history, where the Pentagon confirmed they've been researching UFOs and kind of just slid it under the door like nobody cared. It made UFOs more than tinfoil hat talk, almost made discussions about it reputable. And I guess since then, that wasn't enough to keep us all entertained. As of last week, we've turned things up even more, since we've had two mysterious aircrafts shot down, and the United States and Canadian governments are being pretty cagey about it. So let's run through a quick timeline of what hopefully doesn't turn out to be Independence Day, and let's all pray we didn't kickstart an intergalactic war. On February 10th, a US fighter jet brought down a currently unidentified object soaring over the coast of Alaska. The object shattered into pieces after being shot down and was confirmed to most likely not be a balloon according to the Department of Defense. I, I guess that's good to know or not at all since it doesn't answer anybody's questions. A White House official referred to the object as being the size of a small car with enough room for a family of four to five aliens to fit comfortably and you can put the back seat up and put some stuff in the storage. This would already be enough to fuel speculation for 10 years and then literally the next day, February 11th, another unidentified flying object was shot down, this time over Canada, around the Yukon, that's the province that borders Alaska. A US flown F-22 Raptor shot down the second object, which was described as smaller than the first and cylindrical in nature. Okay, well that's all the weird stuff that happened this week. Nope, because on the 12th, another strange object was shot down over Lake Huron. An object that first had appeared over Montana appeared on Sunday, which was then shot down. It was octagonal, apparently, and it had strings hanging off of it, but it wasn't carrying anything, so no one knows why. Maybe it was just an Amazon drone. Now, things keep getting weirder, I swear to you. Listen to this next part, you're not gonna believe this. When an Air Force commander, Glenn Van Herc, was asked directly on whether or not he thought any of these objects were alien in nature, he said, I haven't ruled anything out at this point. What? <laughs> I, I can't even speak, but the current sitting government, government officials are like, hey, maybe it's aliens, shrugging their shoulders. Is this it, guys? Is this it? They didn't specify whether or not these objects posed a threat. They said they just posed a threat to civilian air traffic, but the White House did say that these objects were broadcasting signals. I would say watch this space for updates, but really, just like watch regular space. At this rate, there's gonna be an alien every single day. But if you can't wait for any more and you just wanna watch alien videos all day, I completely agree with you. That's what I do every day and it's great. We've gotten loads of alien and UFO vids, NASA conspiracies, and hey, if that's not your jam, we got scary stories, horror movies, monsters, cryptids, true crime, I'm baby, we got just about everything spooky under the sun and above it. So stay subscribed to Top 5 Scary, but most importantly, stay scared. But subscribe after. We gotta finish this video first. We got way more alien footage to get through. Moving on. Number 4. The Picket Post Arizona Sighting well, with all of this stuff flying around in the sky these days, is it any surprise that people are catching more weird footage than ever before? The UFO subreddit has been lit up like fireworks on the 4th of July with all kinds of alien sightings from all across the globe. Come take a look at some of the best ones I've seen this week. Hopefully they're new to you as well. Our first sighting comes to us from a redditor by the username of MaxKeller96, and they posted a short clip from Picket Post Arizona that's got us talking. Take a quick little look-see. This is one of the better ones I've seen in a minute. Here's what 
what the redditor had to say about the clip. My sister, dad and I were out hiking near picket post when one of us noticed something glimmering near the mountain so we stopped to take a look at it. All I could make out was that it was a small bright dot in the sky. After a good 15 seconds of staring, I started recording. It then dropped what looked like two flares, though my sister swears she counted at least three. Up until that point, I thought it might have been a helicopter as there's all sorts of army stuff out there, but there's no way anything can accelerate that fast. We all lost sight of it nearly instantly after the video cuts and we were pretty freaked out about it. I've replayed it about a hundred times and I've tried showing it to everyone and no one has any idea other than that it could be a super advanced drone. So if you think you know, please let me know. Well, you heard the guy. If you think you have any ideas to what's going on, you comment down below or jump into the Reddit thread and participate in the UFO discussion. The UFO subreddit is great and they're very friendly to new visitors. That's like their whole thing. They really want to welcome new visitors. Number three, the San Diego sighting. The San Diego and Tijuana sighting, to be more accurate. Our next entry is a pretty interesting one because it isn't just one offhanded sighting that happened in the middle of the night by somebody stumbling out in a bathrobe who's half awake, but it's a corroborated sighting that was happening seemingly across the cities of Tijuana and San Diego. And it wasn't even while Comic-Con was happening, so this isn't part of an extremely elaborate campaign for Ant-Man 4 or anything. So we either have a mass hallucination on our hands because they were something in the water, or there's some questions in the sky that need to get answered. So we'll play a few seconds of some of these clips and help you come to your own conclusions. On September 19th, 2022, several of these videos were captured of these bizarre light patterns darting across the sky. This is a massive sighting, so we can't quite dismiss this as a a trick of the lighter, one isolated incident. There was definitely something weird flying up and around. What makes this kind of notable, besides from, you know, how well documented this is, is I would say the pattern of the lights. They don't really follow like a flare pattern at all, so I don't think it's something that was dropped from an aircraft. When you watch it, they almost kind of seem to move in like a perving unison, like, like flashy geese. <laughs> the original poster who posted the compilation clip to Reddit added as well that another oddity they noted was that after the the lights were seen and military fighter jets surrounding and circling the skies probably to round up whatever was going on so comment section I'll throw it back to you again what do you think spy drones weird paranormal lights or is it just visitors I think it's alien tourists who heard what a great time a weekend in Tijuana is and want to check it out could you imagine if aliens do come to earth but they're not really interested in like diplomatic relations or starting a war or anything they're just like we heard you guys party hard and we want in on that number two Michigan and Grand Park. Another very weird sighting coming from Reddit. This one was posted not even two days ago by a Redditor with a very funny username I can't read out loud on YouTube, but just know it was very funny. At first, it kind of looks like a piece of litter that somehow managed to get all the way up in the sky and is fluttering and darting all around. But if you take a closer look at it, it really seems like it's moving like it's being controlled. People in the comments of the subreddit quickly pointed out that a similar object to this showed up in Australia when this one's filmed in Michigan. Isn't that odd? Two of these similar reports happening on almost opposite ends of the world. People in the subreddit theorized that this object in the video is one of the ones that was shot down over Lake Huron, which definitely makes sense. Lake Huron is, you know, in Michigan. Could this be some of the last footage of this alien craft before it got burnt up? From this clip, I would say to me personally, it looks like some sort of hyper advanced drone, maybe more than a piloted craft. It looks very small, so unless there's like a really teeny tiny little alien inside there, I don't know. But with all cell phone footage, you know, it's kind of impossible to ascertain the size of the thing. I think this one's pretty conclusive, personally. And if this really is footage of the object that was shot down over Lake Huron, I would say the United States and Canadian governments agree with my assessment as well. But as all of these clips, please let me know what you think it is. If it's a drone or an alien or maybe just a really impressive kite that accidentally got destroyed. Number one, the Columbia sighting. Now our number one sighting is another international one. Hey, you think aliens are only going to show up around North America? Come on, expand your worldview a bit. If aliens invade, they're going to go after the whole planet. There's a whole lot to see, a whole lot of things they could burn down with lasers. And it seems like they were curious about the countryside of Colombia because this footage out of Bogota Bogota, Colombia is truly out of this world. Seriously, this is like the most impressive UFO footage I've ever seen in my life. It was captured by a pro photographer who sent it along to a friend of his who's a YouTuber. Hey, reach out, let's collab. In the hopes of getting it to more eyes and people who can analyze it. And yeah, seriously, this is one of the most convincing things I've ever seen. Take a look. Now, I don't wanna, you know, 
poke the bear too much. I know this sounds kind of annoying. I am almost of the belief that this footage is simply too good. I wouldn't outright throw it away and discard it, but I can't remember the last time I've ever seen UFO footage where the craft in this question is this clear and easy to make out. You can almost like make out sci-fi parts of it, you know? It looks to me like it wouldn't look too out of place in a cool video game like a, like a Halo or something. If anyone's a Metroid fan, it reminds me a lot of like the ship that Samus flies around in. I'm just excited because they put Metroid Prime back out there. I think this race is kind of an interesting question and, and sort of a little like food for thought for debate. As camera quality improves and the average person is now at all times carrying with them a camera that rivals most professional quality, no doubt we're going to start seeing more stuff like this. There's going to be an influx of footage that starts to look much clearer, which then ironically ends up getting dismissed because it just looks too good and we assume it's been fake. We're used to blurry blobs shooting across the sky and I think that's what we kind of think UFOs look like. It's a bit of a weird horseshoe where you kind of want alien footage to look bad so it's more believable. I don't know, maybe I'm just rambling. Maybe it all makes sense. But let me know what you think about this one. I think this is absolutely nuts and I think this is the most exciting time to be into UFOs and UAPs as a whole. Number five, El Cajon, California. Our first clip today comes from the beautiful Californian city of El Cajon. Let's take a look at something strange that was spotted in the sky that's got the locals talking. This clip was captured and posted to Reddit by user Exporius. Oh, Exporius, that's fun to say. Say that at home if you haven't yet. Let's take a look at the clip first. Pretty interesting stuff, huh? Definitely something that makes you want to take another glimpse. When it was posted to Reddit, Exporius sounded off in the comments and offered a little bit of context as to what was going on. Here it is. Three black spheres appeared overhead my apartment complex in the afternoon in El Cajon, California. The objects were unlike balloons, rotating around each other and seemingly unaffected by the wind. My partner, who you can hear talking in the background about UFOs, agrees that the shapes were moving in an odd formation relative to the wind. They were also flickering in the sky, disappearing in and out of visibility, not at all like the metallic reflection of a mylar balloon. The objects disappeared short shortly after my girlfriend made me stop filming to go inside. Suddenly, the spheres whipped around about 90 degrees and vanished. Oh, his girlfriend made him stop filming to go inside. Imagine we had the perfect like evidence of UFOs, but somebody had to stop filming because they had to go unload the dishwasher. Anyway, Exporius finishes off by saying, very strange, I have no idea what these are, and neither do we. This clip garnered a lot of attention in the subreddit where it was posted, getting people chatting about what it could possibly be, although with anything like this, there were a fair share of skeptics. Some dismissed the sighting as being nothing more than a flock of birds moving in on a particularly strange triangular fashion, while others suspected it could have been drone. What is a bird if not a feathery drone? So what do we think, my fair viewers? Something worth writing a UAP report on, or was this something a real bird brain posted? You let me know down below, okay? And wow, I've got you. If you're not already subscribed to Top 5 Scary, now would be a great time to fix that mistake. We got loads of UFO clips. I mean, we're on part 7 of this series. You know we got UFO clips. Storytelling, cryptids, monsters, mythologies, terrible stories, stories too good to be real, and stories too real to be good. Stay subscribed, don't miss a scream, but keep watching this video first, okay? Moving on. Number four, from a pilot. Our next clip was posted by the History Channel, of all places. I guess technically if a UFO did appear to us, that, that would be like a pretty big part of history, right? Still, it's funny to me that that's where I'm getting my UFO clips these days. This clip isn't some blurry footage shot from somebody staring right up at the sun. Instead, we have a front row seat from a B-320 pilot's cockpit as a pilot over a commercial flight in Colombia saw something truly bizarre that they couldn't explain. Why don't you take a look at this cuboid UAP that looks out of this world. Let's roll the clip. A metallic looking object that's got a bizarre shape, almost looking like somebody's rolling a giant D-20 through the sky, comes hurtling into frame. When you slow it down, it does look a lot like a flying cube, so if you were worried about the Borg coming to a similar us, this might just be that proof confirming that. Now, in the excerpt from the History Channel clip, they theorized that what this could be could be a probe or a drone of some type for an alien civilization sending out a first wave of scouts before the rest of the party gets here. And this strange object could be one of those drones trying to sneak on by but being caught on camera. Now, not everyone is as convinced as our friends of the History Channel. More than a few viewers have thought that what that could have been caught in the sky here is nothing more than a balloon and some strange angles are making it look a lot more alien and cuboid than it really is. 
So what do we think? Scouts from another civilization coming in to suss out the situation? Or is this clip posted by people who are just full of hot air? I'm getting punny today. Number three, Arizona. Our next sighting comes to us again from our favorite friend for strange clips of flying objects. You know it and I know it. It's the UFO subreddit. Seeing as how we're on part seven, I think I owe the moderators and users of the UFO subreddit <coughs> a top five congressional medal of honor. There you go. Anyway, this next clip posted by user Giancarlo the Great showcases a UAP caught on camera in Phoenix, Arizona that's got everybody sounding off. Let's roll the clip and see if you can stay silent watching. This. Now it's hard not to see what the original poster was talking about because I'm pretty sure you saw the flashing lights floating eerily in the sky like a beacon. What's kind of funny is that the same day from the same location, Phoenix, Arizona, another user on Reddit unintentionally recorded another angle of the exact same sighting or at the very least the same object on a similar trajectory. And in that clip we can see it pulsating a bit. It looks a little more circular from here. In fact several commenters across both of these videos commented that they all saw this in Phoenix. So it's possible that this sighting is bigger than we think or that there's just not much going on in Phoenix, Arizona. No offense, I've never been, I'm sure it's lovely. I'm not sure which is more likely or which scares me more. Now I've got to admit, this one's got me raising my eyebrows just a little bit because I can't quite figure it out just yet. Some users on Reddit suggested that they thought what this could be is something being dragged in the sky, with some users suggesting that it looked like something was tethered and this could be a, a custom drone or a nighttime kite, which, side note, was not something I knew anyone did, but I've since learned is kind of a hobby. I'm now wondering how many years of UFO footage has all just been kites with like LED straps attached to the back of them, because I'm starting to suspect it was most of them. So what do we think? Aliens? Kites? <laughs> Either is possible, really. Number two, Metapod. Our next clip comes to us from Instagram with the pretty funny caption, Metapod strikes again. You'll see what I mean in a moment. But I will say, this is basic stuff. Everybody knows Metapod can only use Harden. Zero out of ten. Go back. Do a lap. Now we featured clips from this particular UAP or style of UAP before on this channel. Maybe the brand or whoever manufactures these crafts. So it's fitting that the caption is Metapod Strikes Again. Well this particular thing baffled me the last time I talked about it and it's baffling us again all the way here. So here it is one more time. Let's roll that clip for you. Now a quick aside for my viewership who aren't big gamers out there. Metapod is a Pokemon that's shaped like a cocoon and I can definitely see where this Metapod comparison comes from. That's definitely what this creature looks like, like some sort of strange cocoon. It seems organic to me in a very weird way, you know? As if unlike a lot of other UAP sightings, this thing is something that's actually alive on its own. It almost looks like it moves a little, you know? Like it wiggles just a little bit, like it's got a little jiggle to it. Are you following me with this? I also feel like it looks a bit like a floating beehive. Maybe this thing is kind of like a Rorschach test. You see what you want to see. Now the fact that this thing keeps popping up with different sightings definitely has me very curious as to what it could possibly be. Also, if there's any Rick and Morty fans out there, I swear this thing has like the exact same silhouette as the giant head that appears in the Get Swifty episode that asks humanity to show it what it's got. Maybe that's why this thing keeps coming back. We haven't shown it what we've got yet and nobody has performed Get Swifty for it. So maybe get on that and maybe we can appease this thing. Number one, Sean Cahill. Our final clip for us today comes to us from Sean Cahill, a UAP enthusiast and a former Navy serviceman who is a veteran of 20 years, who in his retirement has become a decently big name in the UFO community as we set out there to look for the truth. Why don't you take a look at this clip he posted on Twitter and see if you can spot the UAP hovering up above. They'll circle it in red too, don't worry. <laughs> now we get a beautiful look at a mountain range, looks like a Windows XP background and something very strange floating slowly moving across the horizon. Something flat looking like a disc, looking like a real classic flying saucer looking thing straight out of the movies. Now, at first glance, it's definitely got my attention because it's not often you get UAP clips that are this broad in daylight and this clear in view. I'm used to somebody shaking it around like they put their phone in the drying machine. Now, as always with stuff like this, I like to call attention to the more skeptical side of things because I think that gives us an air of credibility. More than a few people on Reddit suggested that this really could be something as uninteresting as just a plane moving slowly through the horizon and looking 
at something like a short takeoff and landing private plane, it definitely seems like it would be very easy to make that mistake. But I personally want to believe that a 20 year Navy vet would know what a civilian plane would look like. So as always, my ghouls and goblins, I'm tossing this one over to you. My gang in the comments, what do we think? Could this be an alien presence caught on camera? Or is this just a plain hoax? Plain, like like plain, that's a, that's a little pun for you. That one's just for the scholars. You're gonna get that on the car ride home. Number five, the USS Omaha. Coming up first today on our list of unexplained UFO sightings on camera is going to be this wild footage taken off the coast of San Diego from onboard the Navy ship USS Omaha. The video footage was shot on an FLIR camera, which is an incredibly expensive, fancy bit of tech. It's a thermal camera to detect heat. It's perfect for this sort of thing. And if you want one for yourself, civilians can buy these cameras. They cost $300,000 about one month's rent in Toronto, very fair. In the footage, we can see what looks to be a sphere-like object flying over the ship before entering the water. The Omaha claimed that for days before this incident was recorded, they were seeing drone-like objects flying around their ship that the crew had no knowledge of. This footage was taken from a crew member trying to ascertain what it was that they were dealing with. Now there is some audio on the clip and it's illuminating. When the object goes into the water, we hear the sailors say mark, bearing, and range, meaning that the sailors on the ship were making a note of the coordinates and location where it went in, suggesting that maybe a submarine was sent in to recover or discover whatever was going on in there. Did it even submerge in the water, or does it seem a bit too like the craft outright disappears going into the water? I wish so bad we could get some more angles on this, or a follow-up to be able to find out what this was. Until then, we just have this strange footage to go off of and what speculation we have at home. There's a wild conspiracy theory that I just found out recently and I love, and we'll mention it a few times in this video, about a secret UFO construction facility under the water. Maybe this drone was heading on home. Who knows? And if you're looking for way more conspiracy theories about really anything, aliens, Bigfoot, JFK, you name it, we got all of that and then some on Top 5 Scary. We really have a video on just about anything and everything you can think of that's freaky and eeky. So hit subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell so you don't miss a scream, but if you wouldn't mind, do that at the end of this video, because I got four more stories of UFO sightings coming up for you right now. Whew, number four. Our next clip comes to us from the UFO subreddit, and it was posted by user the Firo saying, this video was taken by a good friend of mine on a flight to El Paso, and as soon as it gets noticed, it's gone. In the video, we can see we're in the passenger seat of a jet, high above the ground. And flying around the windows is an unexplained object zipping around at high speeds. Saucer-like object, looking a bit like maybe it was a frisbee that got tossed into the air by Godzilla. Now, it does definitely look like a classic flying saucer, like what you imagine a UFO to be, but not as many people were convinced. More than a few people in the comments section for this one were a little skeptical of this high flying footage. Several commenters suggested that this flying saucer is actually little more than a reflection of something from inside the plane's cabin, suggesting that if you pause enough and look right in the video, you can see the object's reflection being repeated in the window pane. Now, there are just as many people suggesting that it is a solid object existing outside the plane. The trouble is we've been given very limited footage and it's hard to tell and there was no follow up by the original poster to provide any more details, so we only have this little excerpt that we've been given. Whenever there's a scenario like this, I do like to leave it up to you, my fateful YouTube comment audience. What do you think? Is this a flying saucer soaring above the clouds or just a reflection of some light? I could honestly go either way with this one. I will say it could easily be explainable as a reflection, but I also feel that like the object has a certain weight to it. I don't know, I'm, I'm directly in the middle for this one. I'm a centrist on this video. It should have been the number three point, but it wasn't. Anyway, jury's out. Please let me know what you think of this. And let's move on to number three. Number three, New Delhi. Coming up next is going to be this clip shared online with the caption, a weird set of lights above New Delhi. Take a look-see. So in the clip, pretty clearly we can see, yeah, there's some strange lights going on in the night sky above New Delhi. There's a scattering of lights above the city's horizon. Now, immediately your first thought might be 
that it's drones, which is a reasonable assumption when it comes to UFO stuff. I feel like several videos that come out of little glowing lights dashing across the night sky usually end up being civilian drones. However, the original poster clarified that drones are illegal in India and there aren't widespread at all for civilians. And on top of that, the area that's being filmed is said to be in the slums where it's incredibly unlikely that anyone would have access to drones. The poster added this little bit of context with the video. I I saw this today around 8 p.m. in New Delhi with a friend. It was massive. This cannot be a building as there is no tall building in that direction, only slums with heights of about four to five floors. Yet this building looked as tall as the Burj Khalifa. There was a moderate wind going on and I thought if it's drones, why aren't they swaying? Not to forget, drones are illegal in India and especially in New Delhi. It looked massive in the sky. I wish the camera saw what my eyes could see. It could absolutely blew me away. Away. I've been to drone shows, but this looked nothing like it. Any idea what this could be? Also, I agree. I wish our cameras did just capture exactly what our eyes saw. It would make all this UFO stuff so much, so much easier. And also, I would finally get a nice picture of the moon to have on my phone. Now, some people in the comment section on this clip suggested that maybe it was a laser light show, but that's just speculation and nothing concrete. Well, one particularly good suggestion from a commenter that did make me laugh said that the original poster should have ran towards the lights to see what happens and investigate up close and personal, you know? Worst case, yeah, you get abducted, never see your friends, family, or home planet again, but you also would get the ride of a lifetime and if you do survive to come back home you get an amazing story to tell people so live a little number two garden ridge our next offering for your entertainment and i hope your amusement is this short clip that was uploaded to youtube pretty recently ufo spotted over garden ridge texas in this clip we can see a somewhat strange flying object that looks a bit like a cocoon being propelled forward or maybe even a beehive or something. The entity has no propulsion or trails behind it, which really doesn't explain how it's moving forward so fast. Some sort of anti-gravity manipulation technology that I don't understand. Is that too wild to speculate that an alien has that? Now we've seen cocoon-like UFOs a few times doing these videos, actually. We saw them a bunch. I don't know if you remember, one of them turned out to be Mr. Peanut, but most of them are UFOs. I'd say after triangle UFOs or little light clusters, I probably see videos of little cocoon-like UFOs like this more than any other kind. So what are these cocoon-like UFOs that keep appearing and why do they all look so similar? This lack of propulsion too is really puzzling me. Now the original poster returned after the fact to add a little bit of clarity in the comments. He said the object was moving with the wind, not against it, so maybe it's possible it's something like a weather balloon that has been swept up in an air current. That's usually what most of these clips turn out to be. I would love to see a statistic on how many UFO sightings are actually weather balloons balloons because I suspect it's probably like 99%. Another commenter suggested that this could be an object heading towards Randolph Air Force Base, speculating that the UAP seen in this video could be a manned jetpack or a very tiny stealth craft of some kind, which would be pretty cool, or even some sort of new drone technology the US military is developing. Now, among other things though, the original uploader did admit and suggest that this really could just be a balloon suggested that he thought it might be attached to a floral arrangement that somebody let go of. Hey, maybe an alien was picking up a last minute Valentine's Day gift. Or hey, maybe an alien had to apologize to someone, you know? Maybe a probing went wrong and a little flowers was the only thing that could smooth it over. I wonder if they'll keep that in the video. <laughs> Number one, the A-10 over Arizona. And coming up at our final spot today for crazy UFO footage is going to be this dramatic footage of a spherical UAP being filmed hailing an A-10 aircraft over Arizona. The footage was filmed by a mobile scope truck recorded by the DHS, that's the Department of Homeland Security. The craft caught on camera is one of unknown origins, well, obviously. So why it's a UFO. The U doesn't stand for usual, it's unidentified. Now there's really not a lot to go on from this clip 
As the original uploader didn't provide a ton of insight or backstory beyond the short clip, so we're left with mostly speculation. Similar to the previous clip, I have to wonder maybe if this is a drone of some kind due to its size in comparison to the rest of the craft which dwarfs it. Could this be an unmanned craft? Is someone piloting it from a remote location far away? Now earlier in the video I quickly shouted out a conspiracy which I recently discovered and I hope we can do like a full video on it because it was fascinating. Saying that a majority of the crafts that we see in UFO videos are scout crafts that come from a construction facility hidden somewhere deep beneath the ocean from a civilization that predates ours. This advanced technological facility is manned by an artificial intelligence that keeps it running autonomously and produces these small crafts naturally to scout out the planet and well I don't know yet what they're doing but something alien. Now obviously that is a very 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 tinfoil hat theory. I got it from a less than reputable website but it is a ton of fun to speculate on and would certainly make sense why there are so many sightings of these similar objects if they were all literally coming from the same factory line. And also wouldn't that just be the nicest, I don't know, funniest little ironic cap to aliens if we were spending all our time looking up but they've been below us the whole time? Anyway, something to think about. Starting off this list in our number five spot we have Project Grudge report 13. Okay, so I've read quite a few different UFO sighting stories and stories of alleged alien abductions and this is fully one of the most terrifying that I have ever heard of. So basically the story starts off in March of 1956 when Air Force Sergeant Jonathan P. Lovett was assisting Major William William <laughs> was assisting Major William Cunningham in the White Sands Missile Testing Grounds near Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico. The pair were out searching for debris from a recent rocket test when Major Cunningham heard a loud scream. His first thought was that Sergeant Lovett had been bitten by a snake, so he went around to help aid his partner when he allegedly saw something he never expected. He recounted seeing the sergeant being dragged away by some sort of long serpentine arm that had wrapped around his legs. Whatever this creature was, it was connected to a hovering silver disc that was in the air about 15 feet away. The Major stood there in horror as he watched this creature creature and the sergeant retreat into the craft which then rose vertically into the sky. Of course he radioed for help and while he was taken to the hospital for observation, search teams were sent out immediately. It wouldn't happen until three days later that they would find the body of Sergeant Lovett only 10 miles from the site where he was said to have disappeared from. The autopsy performed on him later also only raised more questions than answers as his body was severely harmed. So of course there was an investigation that happened and many people claim this investigation was detailed in a 600 page document labeled Project Grudge Report 13. But the problem with this is that no official information on Report 13 exists and the US government denies its very existence. Though Grudge Reports 1 through 12 have been declassified along with Report 14, no official mention or accounting of Report 13 exists and the story solely relies on secondhand accounts of the horrible incident. In our number 4 spot today we have have the cigar shaped UFO. Okay, so let's set the stage. It's 2.45 a.m. on July 24th, 1948, and there are 20 passengers aboard a twin engine propeller plane that is at 5,000 feet being flown from Houston to Atlanta by pilot Clarence S. Childs and co-pilot John B. Witted. Out of the 20 passengers on board, 19 of them are asleep at these early morning hours, and everything seems to be going as per usual until it wasn't. The two pilots and the one one passenger who was awake all witnessed the same thing about 20 miles southeast of Montgomery, Alabama. About a week after the incident, the pilot explained what he had seen by saying, quote, It was clear there were no wings present, that it was powered by some jet or other type of power shooting flame from the rear some 50 feet. There were two rows of windows which indicated an upper and a lower deck, and from inside these windows a very bright light was glowing. Underneath the ship there was a blue glow of light. By his estimate, he watched the UFO for about 10 seconds before it completely vanished. The co-pilot gave a similar explanation and also added, quote, The object was cigar shaped and seemed to be about 100 feet in length. The fuselage appeared to be about three times the circumference of a B-29 fuselage. It had two rows of windows, an upper and a lower. The windows were very large and seemed square. They were white with light which seemed 
to be caused by some type of combustion. I asked Captain Childs what we had just seen, and he said that he didn't know. Well, this is obviously all very strange and peculiar. What has driven UFO enthusiasts even more is the fact that this strange sighting was of course later investigated by the US government, but the results of that investigation have allegedly been mostly destroyed. Does that mean that they found something they aren't willing to share yet? Some believe that perhaps the pilots and the passenger witnessed a secret Soviet spy craft, while others believe it was definitely something of the extraterrestrial variety. In our number 3 spot today we have the Lubbock incident. On August 25th, 1951 in Lubbock, Texas, a group of scientists from the Texas Technical College were all hanging out in the backyard of geology professor Dr. W.I. Robinson. They were all just chilling, enjoying each other's company, until around 9.20pm when they saw something very strange. It was a V-shaped formation of 15 to 30 bluish green lights passing overhead. They were completely confused over what it could be, but figured that the lights would likely reappear, which they did. About an hour later the lights reappeared and at this point all these scientists knew that they had witnessed something exceptionally interesting, but what was it? The scientists weren't the only ones to witness the lights either. About 350 miles away in Albuquerque, New Mexico, an employee of the Atomic Energy Commission's top secret Sandia Corporation, who had a high level Q security clearance, had been sitting outside with his wife, quote, gazing at the night sky, commenting on how beautiful it was, when both of them were startled at the sight of a huge airplane flying swiftly and silently over their home. On the aft edge of the wings, there were six to eight pairs of soft, glowing bluish lights. There were more sightings as well, all reporting a similar thing. The group of scientists began investigating, tracking the lights, which they witnessed 12 more times. They measured the angle of the lights, they tracked the speed, and they attempted, unsuccessfully, to try and measure the UFO's altitude. Here's the deal with this though. The government did end up investigating, but the official explanation for these lights is the most cryptic message I've ever seen. It read, quote, I thought that the professor's lights might have been some kind of birds reflecting the light from mercury vapor street lights, but I was wrong. They weren't birds. They weren't refracted light, but they weren't spaceships. The lights that the professors saw have been positively identified as a very commonplace and easily explainable natural phenomenon. I can't divulge exactly the way the answer was found because it is an interesting story of how a scientist set up complete instrumentation to track down the lights. Telling the story would lead to his identity and in exchange for his story I promised the man complete anonymity. Despite people claiming that the mystery has been solved by this explanation people are left with a lot more questions than answers. In our number 2 spot today we have the Shag Harbor Incident. This UFO encounter is often referred to as Canada's Roswell, so I was shocked that I hadn't heard of it before. Basically, this incident took place on October 4th, 1967, when an unknown object crashed into the water near Shag Harbor, which is a tiny town in Nova Scotia. There were at least 11 people who witnessed this object as it crashed, and many people claimed to have heard a whistling sound sound followed by a loud bang when the crash took place. The witnesses that claimed to have seen the UFO were all doing a bunch of different things at the time. One couple was just sitting on their porch, but the two witnesses that really get me are a flight pilot and a ship captain. On Air Canada Flight 305, First Officer Robert Ralph pointed out to Captain Pierre Charbonneau that there was something strange at the left side of the aircraft. They reported an object tracking along on a parallel course a few miles away and described it as a brilliantly lit rectangular object with a string of smaller lights trailing the object. Shortly after they first noticed it, there was a large but silent explosion near the unknown object, and then two minutes later there was a second explosion, but this one faded to a blue cloud. As for the ship captain, Captain Leo Howard Mercy, he saw four blips on his DECA radar that were totally stationary. This led to him looking up to the sky, and that is when he saw four bright objects sitting in a rectangular formation about 28 kilometers from the vessel's window. He wasn't the only one who saw it on board. The entire crew of nearly 20 fishermen stood on deck and watched. A man named Lori Wickens was another one of the witnesses and he and some of his friends ended up calling the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, because they saw a huge object floating in the Atlantic Ocean about a thousand feet off of the shore. This is all super weird and not only the RCMP, but also the Royal Canadian Navy and the Royal Canadian Air Force became involved in investigation, but nothing was ever recovered or found, but it was also revealed that all commercial, 
all private and military aircrafts along the eastern seaboard were accounted for, so what could have all these witnesses seen? Since they have never officially identified what it was in the official Government of Canada documents, it is listed as a UFO. And finally, in our number one spot today, we have the Westall incident. Taking it back to 1966, we have the largest mass UFO sighting in Australia that at the time was largely ignored. This incident took place when over 300 students and staff members of a school in Melbourne all witnessed multiple UFOs silently flying through the air before they landed in a nearby field. While there's been a ton of speculation about this incident in the many years it's been, one witness account stands out among the rest, and that is the account made by the science teacher from the school, Andrew Greenwood. He was alerted to the UFO event by a hysterical student, and when he went outside to see for himself, everything changed. Previously a skeptic of UFO stories, Andrew's mind was abruptly changed when he saw, as he described it, a round silver object about the size of a car with a metal rod sticking up in the air. He went on to explain that suddenly, five planes came and surrounded the object, all while more people were gathering to watch. He called what happened next the most amazing flying he has ever seen, explaining that quote, every time they got too close to the object it would slowly accelerate, then rapidly accelerate, and then move away from them and stop. Then they would take off after it again, and the same thing would happen. This went on for about 20 minutes before the mysterious object just vanished. As weird as this all was, what was almost weirder was what happened next. Firstly, the headmaster of the school is said to have tried to put a stop to anyone talking about the incident at all, threatening severe punishment to any student or staff who was caught speaking about it, and when the Royal Australian Air Force contacted him, he refused to talk to them at all about it. There have also been stories of witnesses getting visits from people warning them not to speak of the incident. Andrew explained, quote, when he asked the physical education teacher to describe what she had seen herself so that he could compare it with his own observation, she just wouldn't say anything. Another witness who did talk to Andrew and described what she had seen in great detail, just 30 minutes later refused to speak to him and wouldn't say a word. Was this because of the threats from the headmaster? Or was something else going on here? This is definitely one strange UFO story that leaves behind a lot of questions. Number 5. Bonita Springs, Florida Our first clip today is going to be coming to us from the UFO subreddit because really, where else? The UFO subreddit is doing more to get alien content out in the open than any world government is willing to, so if they're not going to do it, we got to let the guys online pick up the slack. This clip was posted to us from user Marcus1640, who had this to say. Well, let's roll the clip though first, I think. I was working in my garage, which is about 100 feet west of this camera location, doing the things you do to keep the wife happy. The sky's clear, and out the corner of my eyes, I see this bright ball getting bigger and bigger. It was really bright and then faded away fast. It wasn't a meteor, and I checked planes live. Nothing was close. I'm in Florida, so this stuff is pretty common, but this was weird, and no noise. Now in the clip, it can be a bit hard to see, so I'll guide you through this, definitely as well because it isn't black and white, which does take away some of it, but we see a bright light up in the sky that comes into frame, hovers around a little bit, it kind of seems like it's scoping out the situation, and then flies out of frame after I guess it decides there's nothing happening. Now OP said that the ball of light when he saw it come into frame was this shining, radiant orange, impressively bright in the night sky. Obviously. That doesn't translate super well, so we have to use our imagination just a little bit, you know? Close your eyes and imagine it's bright and orange. Wow, what a lovely shade you used. Now some speculation in the comment section of Reddit had people wondering if possibly this could be something like space debris burning up on re-entry, or a satellite reflecting the sunlight down to Earth for but a second. Pretty difficult to tell from here, but that's the way it goes with the paranormal sometimes. Nothing can ever be so easy, and would we really want it to be? I think we should have to fight, you know, fight for it just a little bit. Fight to get the truth out there. And as usual, my friends, if you're looking for more UFO sightings and content, I have a pretty good idea of where you can find more of it. We've got eight parts worth of UFO sightings from 2023 alone. If you haven't clicked on through yet, you gotta catch up. And if UFO videos aren't your jam and you clicked on this out of accident, we've got loads more scary content for you, ranging from the macabre and mysterious to the outright horrific and hard to believe. Click on through and find something to scream at and subscribe and help us out. 
mean a lot from old Tay. Number four, the Netherlands. Our next sighting is gonna come to us from the Netherlands. Seems even aliens can't resist hitting up Amsterdam. Let's roll the clip first to get your eyes on it, and then we're gonna take a quick listen to the description posted by its witness, who's remained anonymous. Just before 6 p.m. in front of the cinema in Scheveningen? Scheveningen? There's no way I'm pronouncing that right. I noticed this object. While viewing this object, it almost did not move at all. In the entire 20 minutes I was there, the object floated very slowly once to the left and right, and then twice up and down. The shape remained exactly the same throughout. The size remained the same, regardless of whether or not this object moved up, down, left, or to the right, and there were no lights to be seen on it. Everything was completely black, and it looked like there was a smudge in the sky. In terms of height, uh, this is unfortunately impossible for me to estimate. But there were several people who, like me, took photos and videos. The object was visible for about 20 minutes. Now the video we've included was pretty short. In fact, those 10 seconds were all that was in that video anyway. But when that video was posted to Reddit, it was corroborated by a few other sources who had all seen the same thing and posted similar videos. Meaning, this isn't some CGI trick, or if it is, a lot of people are in on this conspiracy. So what do we think this could possibly be? The usual suspect of it being a strange blimp or a balloon is always a possibility, and I've seen enough of these videos now that I'm always instantly like, this is probably just a balloon, isn't it? But it's still very, very weird. So. Let me know down below what you think. I love hearing from you guys about what you think on all this. Number three, Phoenix, Arizona. This next clip was first posted to TikTok, but since being posted there has been making the rounds across the web since it's got UAP enthusiasts like yours truly peering their eyes open and gluing them to the screen. Let's take a look and you'll all tell me what you think, okay? Now whatever is going on in there is definitely odd. That much I can say with absolute certainty. There's something up there in the clouds that's floating above almost menacingly, maybe that's just me, and it's flashing a light brightly and I swear it almost looks like it's turning invisible over and over again. The thing seems to be slowly moving across the sky in a way that makes it look like it's scanning the surroundings. Naturally, commenters went a bit wild with this clip speculating like I am now. Some suggested that this could be be something like hyper advanced military technology being tested out in the field, which would definitely be exciting and honestly more probable than not, I feel like there's a lot the government don't tell you about what they're working on. The CIA themselves even said that they think most alien sightings in the 50s and 60s were just reports of the U-2 spy craft. Others suggested that this could be something as dull as a civilian drone being flown around in the sky with a lighting rig attached for no other purpose than to drum up attention and get some TikTok views. But do you really think someone would do that? Someone would go on the internet and just lie for attention? <sighs> I don't know. Meanwhile, more than a few people on the original TikTok were very convinced that this was a proper UAP alien sighting and could have been an alien visitor caught on tape. Comment section, I'm gonna toss this one over to you as always. Me, personally, I'm a little inclined to believe this might be a boring one, this could just be a drone, just because I'm not so sure that our alien visitors would give themselves away so easily by attaching lights to their crafts and letting themselves get identified so easily, but maybe, maybe that's what they want us to think. So I'm curious what you all think it could be. Number two, Scotland. This next clip is gonna be coming to us from Scotland. I like when we have UFOs all across the globe. You know, it makes it seem like we're all in this together. It was originally posted on the UFO subreddit as well. I'll roll an excerpt of the clip and then I'll walk you through the context that the user provided additionally with it. Let's roll it. Okay, pretty cool stuff, right? So the user posted, there are two objects in the sky moving at a steady speed. They were not massive, I reckon about the size of a Jeep, maybe twice that size at most. Twice the size of a Jeep is pretty big, I think. Definitely smaller than a plane, but a lot bigger than drones. They had no lights, no wings, no windows, and no propellers. They also made no noise. These objects looked much bigger in real life than they did in the video. On film, they appear to be black, but in real life, I would say they had a color similar to a cloud. Not quite white, not quite white, but not quite gray either. 
They looked to be spheroid or tic tac shaped and they looked solid and metallic. They seemed like they had smoke coming out of them sometimes, but it was hard to know if that was just them moving through the clouds causing an effect that looked like smoke. In terms of height, they were flying about twice the height of a typical city building, definitely lower than a plane would have. Also may I just say, as someone who watches a lot of UFO clips, to be able to find one that is clear as day, filmed on a high quality camera, recorded for a good amount of time and also had a lot of context provided, put this thing in a museum. That is one in a billion. I don't even care if these things aren't aliens. Those three qualities are more exciting than aliens to me. Now when this clip was posted to reddit there were a few people speculating that these could be balloons despite the original poster pointing out that they thought the things were emanating smoke so it's no pun intended a bit up in the air what these things might be. We get reports of cuboid or tic tac like UFOs a lot in this video series which does make me think there's something suspicious going on if so many people report on similar objects like that but we still don't have any answers. I hope we get there someday. I know the truth is out there. Number 1. Hollywood Our final entry for this video is going to come to us from Hollywood. Even aliens like the tourist hotspots. Let's roll the clip and I'll add the commentary and speculation afterwards because this one's a good one. There's a reason I saved it for the last. Now, the original poster and uploader stated, we noticed this huge object in the sky just sitting there by the Hard Rock Casino in Hollywood, Florida. Whoa, 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 stop the track, stop the video. Are there two Hollywoods? I'm a Canadian, so I don't know these things. Is Florida in LA? You guys have to fix that for me. Okay, moving back. Anyway, the object blurred itself out when we started recording it. It was huge. It didn't do much, but it just sort of sat there and blurred itself out. I have tried to Google to find out what it was, but I'm coming up with nothing. It was my husband, my two kids, and I who witnessed this together. Now, I gotta admit, this is one of the most compelling bits of UFO evidence I have seen in a minute. Not to throw the other four clips under the bus, they're all very lovely in their own way and I hold them all in my heart dearly, but this one, oh baby, this is the golden ticket. I'm sure there might be a reasonable explanation for it, but on first glance this thing looks like the definitive flying saucer. Like if you close your eyes and imagine a flying saucer, you start imagining this. It even looks like if you're watching this thing with eagle eyes that the saucer at one point cloaks. And the original poster mentions that it was blurring itself out when they started recording. Very interesting to me. That would explain a lot over the years if aliens have been specifically constructing their crafts to blur them out from being recorded by cell phones. I mean imagine, imagine aliens keep coming to earth just for like vacation and they're getting so annoyed that they're trying to just have some fun, be tourists and people cannot stop taking photos of them. So they're blurring out their crafts. So what do we think my ghouls and goblins? Is this recording simply too good to be true? Is this movie magic and CGI up there? You do have to wonder why if this footage didn't set the internet ablaze because that looks about as flying saucery as anything could possibly get. Of course, maybe the men in black and the higher ups are trying to scrub this clip from the internet and don't want you to see and maybe I just got the whole channel in trouble. Number 5. Kansas City our first video today is going to be this clip posted to reddit from user oh wow much fun you guys which coincidentally is exactly how I feel making these videos for you. It was appropriately titled weird flying object on security which is very good. I like when a title doesn't leave room for guesswork. Let's roll the clip. You see that? It's pretty impossible not to. We'll roll it again just in case you didn't. You can see what looks like an alien mothership sneaking into the frame. Now if you saw that and your jaws open and you're looking for a little bit of context, our dear original poster provided some. There was no sound at all and it was cold so no bugs were making noise either. It wasn't as high as a plane would have been. My next thought was that it was drones. But this would have to have been very elaborate because there was 50 to 100 objects and there were no lights. These objects were solid gray with a matte finish and they didn't seem shiny at all. The best way I can describe what I saw was about 50 to 100 gray square objects that were moving in a grid like fashion like silky fabric. The way they moved was similar to Aurora Borealis centralized entirely within this doorstep. My wife and I were so dumbfounded by it all we would have thought we were insane 
until we saw this threat. So what do you think, my noble viewers? Is our fair cameraman insane in the membrane, or are the rest of us insane for not seeing the truth? Hey, you let us know down below in that sweet comment box. And if you're looking for more stories about UFO sightings, I have a pretty good feeling I can know where you can find seven more parts worth of it. And if space stuff isn't your jam, why don't you click on through, because we got something scary for just about any topic you can think of, and then some. So click through, hit subscribe and that bell, and don't miss a single scream. But do all that after this video, okay? Keep watching this one. We worked hard-ish on it. I worked hard-ish. All right, moving on. Number four, Israel. Our next clip comes to us from Facebook. You know, good to have one that's not from the UFO subreddit. Try to diversify a little. It was captured in Hedera, Israel, and it features something truly shocking. Let's roll that clip and take a look for yourself. You see it? It was kind of hard not to. Up in the sky, we could see something that does not look like it came from this world, even remotely, looking like some beam of energy floating across the night sky. In fact, I'll be honest, it doesn't look much like a spacecraft to me. As far as unidentified aerial phenomena go, this thing is definitely living up to its name since it's up in the air and I have genuinely no idea what's going on here and I like to think that I know a thing or two about UFOs at this point. I've watched 35 hours worth of clips of them. Some commenters on the clip suggested that maybe this intense pattern of lights could be something on a building, like a neon advertisement for like a casino or something, which I suppose could make sense, but I don't know many billboards that advertise with crazy cool patterns like this. Looks more like a flux capacitor than anything else. I don't really think it's an alien ship either though. I gotta be honest, I really have no idea what this is, totally stumped. Could this be a sign of another life, something more powerful than we could possibly understand manifesting itself in the sky, you know, is this a thunder god kind of deal? Is there a simple explanation for what's causing all of this? Is it just CGI? You let me know what you think about this one sincerely while I keep studying this clip over and over again, just hopelessly confused, hoping desperately to get a new piece of information here. Number three, Montreal. Our next video comes to us from a truck driver from Montreal, which is maybe why I'm including this video out of a sense of some national pride. The clip was posted to Reddit really without much context. The only thing provided is that our sweet driver swears that whatever it was they saw, they were absolutely certain it's not a kite or a balloon, which was gonna be my first two guesses, so cross them off. Let's roll the clip and see if you agree. Pretty weird, right? You saw it, right? We can play it again if you didn't, but I hope you did. Take a real good look up in the clouds to make out that strange gray oblong just floating along. Whatever is following this driver as he makes his route is definitely weird. It's got no flashing lights or no quick dashes to hyperspeed, but it's not really got the silhouette of an aerial vehicle. It doesn't look like a plane or a drone or anything. At first glance, it does make some sense why you might think it's a balloon. Definitely a lot of people on Reddit thought it might have been a balloon. There were also several Redditors who, when the clip was posted, argued that this was a border patrol blimp, which I had never seen one before. So if you're seeing one for the first time as well, uh, let me introduce one of the silliest shapes we've ever put inside the sky. Uh, what did I just call it? A border patrol blimp? Ridiculous looking thing. So what do we think out there, my top five scary gang? Is this clip full of hot air? Or could this be a sign of some unknown visitors in the sky telling us that we should keep on trucking? Our next clip, number two, Rome. Our next clip comes to us from Reddit as well. It's a very short clip, but hey, Sometimes the short ones are the best ones, you know? Keep it short and sweet and all that. Let's let the clip do the talking here and let's roll that clip. We liking this? We liking the, the roll thing? Did you see it? Of course you did. I don't even know why I'm asking. This one is clear as day. There's nothing else in the sky except for the flashing alien lights that are distracting your eyes from looking at anything else. These lights are definitely 
intimidating, you know? It kind of looks like the predator is out there watching and hunting this train. Those little like laser sight things look exactly like the laser sights on his little shoulder cannon. Now what I think is interesting is we've seen a couple of these sightings like these on this specific series. Go back and watch the other old seven, which is making me wonder if there's an explanation somewhere out to be found for these triangular patterns of flashing lights to explain why they keep coming up with such regularity. Drones are what comes to mind as always, and it's usually what comment sections seem to think because we can make drones do pretty impressive things. If you ever see those displays of like drones making pictures in the night sky, it's possible. But the set of lights don't seem to be moving too much, or at least the train is going significantly faster than they are, which does make me wonder if maybe these lights are stationary, perchance. If these could be lights from the top of a building, maybe off a radio tower or something. Or could these be three perfectly coordinated alien scouts watching from up above? Now, some detractors and skeptics suggested that it could be as simple as a trick of the light or something reflecting in a strange way. Although if you're like me and you watch the video about a hundred times, like I do every time I make one of these things, you'll see it pass extremely briefly behind a signpost, like a single second. Meaning whatever this thing is, it's way off in the background. So what do we think? Could this have been a close encounter of the third kind? Or is this train of thought just hopeless? Puns for all my, my scholars out there. You'll get that on the car ride home. And number one, Ontario. Hey, what a lovely coincidence because this clip is also a series of mysterious orange flashing lights moving in a triangular fashion. I told you these are a recognized phenomenon. Nobody believes me. Anyway. Let's let the clip do more of the talking. Roll that clip. Did you see it? Those flashing lights shooting across the night sky like they were on a mission? Looks like an incredibly similar thing to the sighting from the previous video. I promise you I didn't arrange it like this intentionally. That just happened. Movie magic. I did some digging between now and the last point I just spoke about, and in the last 30 seconds, I've come to understand there's a popular conspiracy theory regarding a secret alleged black ops stealth aircraft called the Manta Ray TR-3, a hypothetical triangular aircraft that some UAP enthusiasts believe to be tied to several reportings of triangular UFOs like the one you saw in these last two videos. Now, it would make sense and it's definitely something I want to be cognizant about when I'm making UAP content is probably, if we're being honest, more likely, if anything, strange stuff we see up in the sky could be advanced government technology more than it would be little gray men passing through the clouds. In fact, the CIA themselves believe that over 50% of reports of all unidentified aerial phenomena throughout the 50s and 60s were merely people citing the U-2 spy plane while it was being tested and believing that that's what they were looking at. But, you know, if you're watching part eight of this series and you're still believing what the CIA tells you, I can't help you. But is that what's happening here? Are we just seeing spy crafts up above? It does beg the small question, why would a spy craft whose aim is to literally fly under the radar unnoticed have glowing lights giving away? Number five, Las Vegas. I think anybody watching these videos are pretty curious about UFOs and we'd all wanna see a UFO up close and personal, yeah? Well, what if you had one crash in your backyard? For this Las Vegas family, they might've had a close encounter right on their doorstep. No contact UFO curbside delivery. A 911 call about non-human beings caught the attention of local police when on April 30th, around midnight, a police officer's body cam recorded something streaking across the sky. This event was corroborated across California, Nevada, and Utah, according to the American Meteor Society, who probably answers the phone a lot about possible UFOs. And whatever it was that landed in this family's backyard, drone video showed a circular imprint in the dirt. When the family called, they claimed that there was an eight foot person outside the craft and another inside it, with big eyes and looking at them. The caller described them as being eight to 10 feet tall, looking like aliens with big eyes and a big mouth. Described them as being shiny and 100% not human. Now this wasn't just one grand 
random crazy caller as the whole family living there said they saw the same thing. The caller said that they saw a shooting star and now there's something in the backyard. The officer responding said he saw something fall out of the sky too, which is why he was so curious about it. Representatives from Nellis Air Force Base said they weren't involved with this incident at all and suggested contacting the police. Interestingly though, a spokesperson for the Pentagon didn't comment at all in regards to this event. Now, isn't that interesting? And if you're looking for way more footage about UFOs, well, hey, you already know Top 5 Scary is the place to be and then some. We got more UFOs than you could ever watch in a lifetime. So click subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell so you don't miss any of our scary videos from us, but do that at the end of this video, okay? Because I got four more pieces of UFO footage and evidence coming up for you right now. Number four, Indonesia. Now here is an absolutely wild story for you. A marine veteran is breaking a 14 year silence claiming now that he and his squad mates saw a UFO while they were deployed in Indonesia in 2009 and were threatened into silence over it. Michael Herrera was a 20 year old rifleman sent on a Navy humanitarian mission during the 2009 Sumatra earthquake and the tsunami that would devastate the region. He claims that his unit was guarding a supply drop outside the city of Padang and his six man unit stumbled on something they were never meant to see, an octagonal unknown aerial craft that seemed to be being used by some sort of clandestine government force. The Marine has an unmarked four year service record and showed text with a fellow witness who refused to speak out about this incident, worrying that discussing this incident would jeopardize his life. Herrera claimed that while guarding supplies from insurgents, they had weapons drawn on them by unmarked forces who had American accents, who told them off and demanded to know who they were. These unknown soldiers took the weapons from the Marines and took their IDs and began loading ammunition, large weapon cases, and other things from modified Ford F-350s onto a platform beneath a large octagonal craft, which would rise off the ground and shoot away at an incredible speed of up to 4,000 miles per hour. Now, for 14 years, Harara did not say a word on this incident. It wasn't until the recent wave of UFO sightings and discussions that he felt like it was finally time to come forward about this event. Now, it doesn't really sound like a Marine to lie about something like this especially not one with an unmarked four-year service record like that. So what happened? Who were those guys? Officially sanctioned by the US government? Some sort of other organization entirely? The men in black? Is it fun to wildly speculate? It is. Number three, David Grush. David Grush is a former intelligence officer, a US Air Force veteran who has had got ties to UAP and UFO development and research, and you're probably gonna be hearing this name a lot if you're interested in UFOs and all that stuff, because he's been blowing the whistle on possible UFO activity inside the US, boldly claiming that not only does the American government have proof of extraterrestrial life, but that the American government is storing alien crafts for their own purpose, which kind of makes sense of that last story if you think about it, they might be connected. Now last week, Grush made headlines when he claimed that the US government has concealed evidence of a non-human craft from Congress, and Grush is trying to make people aware of this story. He claims that it's got an intact or partially intact craft, as well as he's got evidence of deceased agents and officers through crash site retrieval, explaining when you recover something that's landed or crashed, sometimes you encounter dead pilots and believe it or not, it's true. Quote, does that mean that they have evidence of alien bodies, deceased aliens? Now Grush claims that he personally, he never saw any non-human evidence up close and personal, but he knows enough people within the program to confide that it's real, saying he knows several intelligence officers involved in the crash site retrieval program, as well adding that there's a decades long competition with adversaries to retrieve the materials from crash sites to reverse engineer the crafts for defense advantages. Isn't that so like humans? We got alien technology and the only thing we can do with it is build more warships. Can't do anything fun with it. Anyway, it's an incredible claim and if this is true, it would be the story of the century. Maybe the biggest story in human history. This moment of truth that everyone is looking for and fighting for. This final proof that aliens are totally out there among us and we're working on their crafts. So is it true? <laughs> 
truth? Is the truth finally coming out? All we can do is sit on our thumbs and wait and see. Number two, Strange Orb. I think this has been kind of a heavy video so far. You know, we've got these big claims of whistleblowers, leaks to the press, shadowy organizations, black ops mercenaries, people being silenced, retrieved crashes. We need at least one footage of something strange, a little black dot going across the sky to just lighten up the mood a little bit, you know? Plus, I really think footage of weird orbs is kind of the bread, butter, the roots of this channel, and I don't want to stray too far from my roots. This following footage that we're about to show you was captured sometime in June 2021 and remained dormant for years until being posted on the UFO subreddit, which is the most trusted source of UFO information in the human world, I think. When full disclosure happens, it's going to happen on Reddit before anywhere else. Now, this clip shows a small black spherical orb darting around the sky at that impossible to ascertain distance where you can't make out any features or anything. The object moves erratically. It doesn't seem like it's moving with the wind or being blown, but rather jerked around, like stopping completely and then going in the opposite direction, giving the impression that it's something that's being controlled. Now, whether that means it's being controlled remotely or it's being piloted by something very, very small, I'm not sure, but it's something that's being driven. That much, I think. Drones are obviously the most likely possibility, although I would say the object in this clip seems like it's moving just a little bit too fast to be a drone from this planet. We see a lot of these mysterious spheroid objects in UFO clips, and I have to wonder if they're all coming from the same source. Somebody check the manufacturer's logo on it. Now, it bears mentioning with any clip of a weird thing in the sky, very likely could just be a balloon, could also be some sort of camera glitch or artifact, and without any of the context or important key details in this video, like where it came from, who filmed it, and why, it can be hard to tell for certain just what this is. As much, not much to go on but speculating. So I'll leave it up to you in the comment section. You let me know if you think this is just circumstantial and distracting us from the truth, or if this is another piece of the puzzle. And number one, covered crafts. Of course, David Grush isn't the only person claiming the US government has impressive UFO technology hidden away. An unnamed anonymous whistleblower, probably for the best, claims that a UFO recovered by the US military is so advanced that its technology doesn't even make sense to humans at all. Claiming that this craft distorts space time. Claiming that on the inside, it's the size of a football stadium. This story was relayed from the whistleblower to lawyer Daniel Sheehan, who's a lawyer who specializes in aiding UFO whistleblowers. There really is a guy for everything, isn't there? The story goes that the US recovered a craft that was 30 feet wide and embedded in the earth. The crash site recovery crew sent an agent inside the downed craft and discovered like the TARDIS, it's much bigger on the inside, saying that he was disoriented and nauseous after stepping inside and discovering that the innards of the craft were impossibly large, the size of a football stadium while the outside was only about 30 feet wide. Now apparently size isn't the only thing affected by the wondrous craft, with the whistleblower claiming that the agent said he was inside the UFO for a few minutes, while the rest of the unit outside claimed that he was inside for hours. Now, a story this bold would require a great weight of evidence to go with it. And that's the kicker, because unfortunately we don't have much of anything at all outside of an anonymous unnamed source, possibly relating this to a lawyer. There's no no dates, no location given, and definitely no photos or footage. So can we rack this up? Is this a believable source or is this someone trying to jump on the coattails of other whistleblowers and trying to drum up a bit of attention? Are all of these stories coming out right now proof that full disclosure is coming up on us or is this just a carrot on a stick to keep us chasing forever and ever? I'm not sure, but I know the truth is out there, my ghouls and goblins. In fifth place, we have the lights above the New Jersey Turnpike. On July 14th of 2001, drivers on the New Jersey Turnpike stopped on the highway just 15 minutes after midnight, where they marveled at the sight of strange orange and yellow lights in a V formation over the Arthur Kill Waterway between Staten Island, New York and Carteret, New Jersey. Carteret Police Department's Lieutenant Daniel Turant was one of the witnesses, as well as other metro area residents from the Throgs Neck Bridge on Long Island in Fort Lee, New Jersey, near the George Washington Bridge. Air traffic controllers initially denied that any airplanes, military jets, or space flights could have caused the mysterious lights. A national weather meteorologist could find nothing in the weather to also explain those lights. 
Luckily, when there's something strange in one's neighborhood, one can always call New York Strange Phenomena Investigators or NYSPI. No, 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 no Ghostbusters here. This band of inquisitive minds claim to have discovered the FAA radar report from Newark International Airport on the night in question that indicates an enormous number of airborne objects, without transponders, beginning at around 10.31 p.m. and ending at 12.51 a.m. EST. At least 15 people contacted the police department to report the strange lights, but Durant and other police officers are at a loss to explain just what it was hovering in their skies. Here's the thing. It's been 22 years since that incident now, and if there weren't any military folks in the air, and so many witnesses saw this, I'm leaning towards an other on this. In fourth place, we have the Alderney UFO sighting. On April 23rd of 2007, Ray Bauer, a 50-year-old pilot with 18 years flying experience, reported seeing a cigar-shaped brilliant white light in the sky. Now, he first thought that it was reflected light from greenhouses on the nearby island of Guernsey before realizing it was a stationary object, approximately the size of a Boeing 737, at an altitude of around 2,000 feet and at a distance of roughly 40 miles. Bauer said that he approached the light and looked at it through his binoculars. He also said he saw a second object moving in formation with the first set of light, later stating it was around closer to the island of Gorinsny. He said the UFO was clearly visual for approximately nine minutes. After landing in Alderney, Bauer made an official report to the Civil Aviation Authority, labeling the incident as a near miss. He then flew the return leg of his flight to Southampton, but did not see the objects again. By the 25th of April of 2007, the British Ministry of Defense had stated that it would not investigate the reported sighting. Approximately a week after that sighting, the MOD stated the incident had taken place in French airspace, and so it was outside their responsibility. Two weeks after that, the MOD released information connected with the report, including a statement from a second pilot. The report of the sighting published by the MOD reads in its entirety. First object was bright orange yellow, there was a gap in light or darker area. Second object was identical. Several passengers on his aircraft had noticed the light, one of whom described it as sunlight colored. In 2021, he said it was a very sharply defined, solid, bright yellow gold object with a couple of black bands on the side that were kind of shimmering. Two passengers reported seeing the light to the Evening Standard, one of them describing it as an orange light, kind of like an elongated oval. Patrick Patterson, a pilot from the Channel Islands airline Blue Island reported that he saw a similarly described object in the same approximate position. It was later reported that this pilot saw an object behind him to his left at around 1950 feet. One interpretation of this event was that this was an atmospheric phenomenon. Despite the pilot's openness about the incident, the cooperation of the military, and countless eyewitness reports from passengers and people on the ground, the incident remains a total mystery. I'm just saying there are too many witnesses for this to be anything fake. In third place, we have the Belgian UFO wave. So the Belgian UFO wave began in November of 1989 and peaked with the events of the night of the 30th to the 31st of March, 1990. On that night, one unknown object was tracked on radar and two Belgian Air Force F-16s were sent to investigate, with neither pilot reporting seeing the object. No reports were received from the public on the date, but over the next two weeks, reports from 143 people who claimed to have witnessed the object were received, all of them after the event. Over the ensuing months, many others claimed to have witnessed these events as well. Following the incident, the Belgian Air Force released a report detailing the events of that night. Yeah, yeah, I'll backtrack, I promise. At around 11 o'clock at night on the 30th of March, the supervisor for the Control Reporting Center, or CRC, at Glans received reports that three unusual lights were seen moving towards Thorombe Jean Bleu, which lies to the southeast of Brussels. Glan CRC requested that the Waver Gendarmerie send a patrol to confirm the sightings. Approximately 10 minutes later, some reports stated that a second set of lights were seen moving towards the first triangle. Traffic Center Control tracked one object only on its radar, and an order to scramble two F-16 fighters from Beauchene Air Base was given. Through this time and reports after the event, some people claim that the phenomenon was visible from the ground, describing the whole formation as maintaining their relative positions while moving slowly across the sky. And over the next hour, the two scrambled F-16s attempted nine separate interceptions of the target. On three occasions, they managed to obtain a radar lock for a few seconds, but these were later shown to be radar locks on each other. After around 12.30 in the morning, radar contact became much more sporadic and the final confirmed lock took place at around 40 minutes after midnight. Following several further unconfirmed contacts, the F-16s eventually returned to the base shortly after 1 a.m. Members of the Waver Gendarmerie, who had been sent to confirm the original report, described four lights now being arranged in a square formation, all making short jerky movements before gradually losing their luminosity and disappearing in four separate directions at around 1.30. During one of the radar locks, the UFO accelerated from 150 miles per hour to over 1,100 miles per hour, while changing altitude from 9,000 feet to 5,000 feet in a matter of seconds. After his retirement, Major General Wolf de Brouet wrote in a statement that the Belgian UFO wave was exceptional and the Air Force could not identify the nature, origin, and intentions of the reported phenomena. The Belgian objects have still never been explained. Look, 
Air Force folks are the ones to trust in situations like this. They are literally trained on how to recognize aircrafts in the sky. In second place, we have a sighting in Alaska. Japan Airlines Cargo Flight 1628 was a UFO incident that occurred on November 17th of 1986, involving a Japanese Boeing 747-200F cargo aircraft. I'm learning a lot about planes today. <laughs> the aircraft was en route from Paris to Narita International Airport, near Tokyo, with a cargo of Beaujolais wine. Mm. Wine. Focus, Alexa. Focus. <laughs> Over the Reykjavik to Anchorage section of the flight at around 1711, so Place 5.11 over eastern Alaska, the crew first witnessed two unidentified objects to their left. These abruptly rose from below and closed in to escort the aircraft. Each had two rectangular arrays of what appeared to be glowing nozzles or thrusters, though their bodies remained obscured by darkness. When closest, the aircraft's cabin was lit up and the captain could feel their heat on his face. These two crafts departed before a third, much larger disc-shaped object started trailing them. Anchorage Air Traffic Control requested an oncoming United Airlines flight to confirm the unidentified traffic, but when it and a military craft sighted plane 1628 at around 10 to 6, no other craft could be distinguished. Captain Tarochi contacted Anchorage Air Traffic Control and requested, you know, a change of course. The UFO followed the plane despite any of the captain's maneuvers. The sighting lasted 50 minutes and ended in the vicinity of Denali. All of the data, including ground radar that captured the unidentified craft, was collected and presented at a meeting with the FBI and the CIA. After reviewing all the material, the government officials decided that this was the first radar recording of a UFO. Yep, I didn't stutter. The government confirmed this. In first place, we have the Shag Harbor. UFO incident. So this incident was the reported impact of an unknown large object into waters near Shag Harbor, Nova Scotia, you know, a tiny fishing village on the Atlantic coast, on October 4th of 1967. The reports were investigated by the RCMP, Canadian Coast Guard, the Navy, and the Air Force, as well as the U.S. Condom Committee. I had to research that because I first thought it was like a typo for condom, and I almost busted gut laughing. Alrighty. Time for facts. At about 11.20 p.m. Atlantic Daylight Time, at least, you know, 11 people saw a low flying lit object heading towards the harbor. Multiple witnesses reported hearing a whistling sound, like, you know, a large kaboom device, and then a whoosh, and then finally a loud bang. While en route to Toronto, while flying over Sherbrooke and St. John, Quebec, at around 3,658 meters from the Halifax International Airport, Air Canada officer Robert Ralph pointed out to Captain Pierre Charbonneau on flight 305 that there was, um, Something strange out the left side of the aircraft at 7.15 p.m. In his report, the captain reported an object tracking along on a parallel course a few miles away. He described it as a brilliantly lit, rectangular object with a string of smaller lights trailing it. At 7.19 p.m., the pilots noticed a sizable silent explosion near the large object. And two minutes later, a second explosion occurred which faded to a blue cloud around the object. Meanwhile, while standing at the wheelhouse of his vessel, Captain Leo Howard Mercy was looking at four blips on his decorator that were stationary. When he looked up at about 20 kilometers from the vessel's windows, he could see the four bright objects situated in a roughly rectangular formation. The entire crew of nearly 20 fishermen stood on deck and watched the object in the northeastern sky. Mercy radioed the Rescue Coordination Center and the Harbor Master in Halifax asking for an explanation and filed a report with the Lunenburg RCMP outlining his sighting when they returned to port. Over in Halifax, the Chronicle Herald and local radio stations reported a glowing object that was seen by many people who called their newsroom. They reported witnessing strange glowing objects flying around Halifax at around 10 p.m. Assuming an aircraft had crashed, within about 15 minutes, two RCMP officers arrived at the scene. Concerned for survivors, the RCMP detachment contacted the Rescue Coordination Center in Halifax to advise them of the situation and ask if any aircrafts were missing. Before any attempt at rescue could be made, the flying object, with the lights still showing, started to sink and disappeared from view. So a rescue mission was quickly assembled. Within half an hour of the crash, local fishing boats went out to the crash site in the waters of the Gulf of Maine off Shag Harbor to look for survivors. Here's the fun part. No survivors, bodies, or debris were taken either by the fishermen or by a Canadian Coast Guard search and rescue cutter, which arrived about an hour later from nearby Clark's Harbor. By the next morning, RCC Halifax had determined that no aircrafts were missing. While still tasked with the search, the captain of the Canadian Coast Guard cutter received a radio message from RCC Halifax that all commercial, private, and military aircraft were accounted for along the eastern seaboard in both Atlantic provinces and New England. That same morning, RCC Halifax also sent a priority telex to the air desk at Air Force headquarters in Ottawa, which handled all civilian and military UFO sites informing them of the crash and that all conventional explanations such as aircraft, flares, had been dismissed. The object was never officially identified and was therefore referred to as an unidentified flying object in the Government of Canada documents. Yep, 
That was the name. I'm just gonna repeat this. The government of Canada officially confirmed it as a UFO. Two days after the incident had been observed, a detachment of Navy divers from Fleet Diving Unit Atlantic was assembled, and for the next three days, they combed the seafloor of the Gulf of Maine off Shag Harbor looking for an object. The final report said no trace of an object was found. Just saying. Fascinating that no one found anything, and that the government confirmed it was a UFO. So take that, skeptics. Number five, David Grush. So, if you've been following the topic of UFO disclosure closely, and the odds are good that you are because you're watching this video, you probably know the name David Grush fairly well. Grush is a former intelligence officer with years of dedicated service and involvement in UFO research who's been blowing headlines open with some of his shocking revelations, which, if they're true, would change the fabric of our world. It would change everything as we know it. We'd look at these days right now as the, the, the golden days, I think. <laughs> I lost my train of thought there. Hoops. We'd look at these days as like the days before Pandora's box opened. We're never gonna be able to close that seal again. Grush served on the UAP portfolio for the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency as well as the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, which is a bureau for investigating alien sightings. So Grush has the credibility. Now, what is he alleging? In a recent interview with News Nation, Grush drops the bomb saying that non-human intelligence has visited Earth and it's recognized and known by major governments, claiming that in 1933, a craft was recovered by Mussolini's forces in Italy and then intercepted by the US in 1944, meaning that the Vatican helped suppress the knowledge of this and the Vatican is aware of non-human intelligence out there. In this same interview, and if you're interested in this stuff, you really should just watch it instead of watching me talk about it, Grush alleges that the US has recovered quite a number of alien crafts over the years. With at least 12 or more sitting in US reserves right now being studied reverse engineered. Occupied bodies have been recovered as well. Now fascinatingly, Grush says he wouldn't exclusively call these entities alien, saying they can be extraterrestrial or interdimensional creatures. He doesn't provide too much of a description on what they could look like, and obviously there's no photos, sadly, just that they're out there. He goes on to state that the infamous Roswell incident in New Mexico was absolutely real, and that everything since then has all been a concentrated, prolonged disinformation campaign to get people away from the subject, even going so far as to say the US participates in widespread mass disinformation, leaking true details alongside falsified reports to keep UFO discussion a fringe subject, preventing it from being taken seriously. And hey, if that's the case, US Army, if you want to throw me a couple bucks to spread some rumors and disinformation, my DMs are open. The full disclosure interview is absolutely fascinating, fascinating stuff, and I highly recommend you go seek it out after this video. But, you know, before you do that, you could always spend a little bit more time on Top 5 Scary since we've got lots and lots and lots of alien and UFO videos for you to peruse and enjoy. And if that's not your thing, we've got something scary for everybody. Go Ghosts, goblins, ghouls, Frankensteins, true crimes, you name it. So hit subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell to not miss anything, but do that at the end of this video, okay? I got way more revelations and truths to blow open. Number four, an Air Force engineer. Now, Grush's forwardness is inspiring others to come forward with their own full disclosure. I mean, if they won't, we have to, right? An anonymous source claiming to be an aerospace engineer added an addendum to Grush's interview on Reddit, claiming that they could corroborate some of his points. Take a listen and obviously take a huge grain of salt as you're listening to all of this, as it is just someone typing on a computer, but I thought it was fairly interesting. As a current aero engineer for the US Air Force, 26 years and going, I can help you decode at least some of this interview. First, I know that Grush has only limited ability to talk about the subject. He did get clearance to speak to a certain extent, but he must withhold quite a bit in order to avoid very serious law violations. So expect him to be holding back some things he could say, and this also necessitates rephrasing on the fly language he would normally use. Second, the retrieval program he talks about is real and is the most highly classified program in the US. The program is called Zodiac, and this may or may not come out to the public soon. Take this in when viewing the man's speech. He is trying to talk to us about the most highly classified project in the world. People have died, lost careers, lost family to the secret. So to say this is stressful to talk about would be an understatement. Should I be talking about this right now? Should I be talking about this? <laughs> Am I gonna get the channel shut down? Third, when he shook his head talking about the spacecraft and alien, because we don't really 
think this is what they are. But this term is in common use publicly and is as close as we can describe the phenomena to the general public and be understood. These things, these UAP are much more than spacecraft. They are transmedium interdimensional craft to the best of our knowledge. And the alien aspect, this is just the easiest term we have because we don't really know for sure what they are, but this term is close. At present, we consider most of these beings to be advanced biological AI. Ooh. Lastly, I can tell you from my own experience while on duty, these are real. I can tell you this because I was present on two occasions. I wasn't read into this program, so I can only tell you I was there on two occasions, happenstance, and they're as real as the nose on your face. Well, as you can see on my face, my nose is pretty real, pretty here, all natural, no work done on that thing. So that means this guy's story is real too, and a fascinating story it is. Number three, Stephen Greer's disclosure. Dr. Stephen Greer is a renowned ufologist and a former physician intent on waking the public up and achieving that full disclosure. Possibly inspired by the surge of whistleblowing in recent months, he held a press conference with several key witnesses and testimonies that he believed would provide adequate disclosure and get the truth out there. Now the whole thing is available online and assuming we take all of these things as fact and it's not a very well organized grift, the secrets revealed within are life changing. Greer claims that many different civilizations of extraterrestrials have all visited Earth, okay? Not just one species or one civilization, but lots. Now, he reports that as of now, no non-human entities have displayed an outward hostility towards humans, which is nice. That's one less thing to worry about. Don't have to worry about the Covenant coming in anytime soon. Like Grush, Greer claims that the U.S. has had access to non-human craft, and they've been studying the tech for breakthroughs in weapons, in cloaking, propulsion, energy technology. Now, this is the really fascinating part, is a claim that one reverse engine engineered extraterrestrial technology is pre-programmed life forms, a sort of synthetic artificial life which are mistaken for aliens, described as biosynthetic AI, which sounds very similar to what the aerospace engineer was talking about in the last point. So maybe they share a Google Drive and they're getting ideas from each other, or maybe they're onto something. Another huge bombshell is allegations that within the US government, there's a shadowy clandestine group that was established in the 50s that operates free from the government's wishes, and they conceal alien tech and hoard it from the rest of the world to further their own goals. They're apparently very good at targeting and downing extraterrestrial vehicles, and Possess the tech and manpower to threaten security. Now these are bold claims, but in this day and age, it's going pretty difficult to ascertain what's a bold claim and what's the truth actually leaking through the cracks. I mean, everybody's talking about biosynthetic AI aliens, maybe biosynthetic AI aliens are out there. Number two, Corporal John Wayne Gant. Now, if y'all remember to the last part of this video, not the previous thing I just talked about, but the last five parts I talked about, part one, we spoke of the testimony given by the Marine Michael Herrera, who claims that he saw paramilitary forces that seemed to be American loading weapons and munitions into an octagonal, non-human looking craft while he was deployed in Indonesia in 2009. Now, the story sounded outrageous, kind of like the plot of a video game, but also sound extremely similar to an eyewitness account from another Marine years and years and years earlier in Peru. Now you take a listen to the statement by Lance Corporal John Wayne Gant. Lance Corporal Wayne Gant had been a Marine since 1994 and in 1997 was deployed to Peru. Alerted to a possible friendly ship that had crashed at 3 a.m., he and a few other Marines drove out to the crash site in Humvees to investigate. After hours of searching through the brush, they found a gash in the land where it seemed as if something super hot had cut through the land, claiming that it looked as if a laser had gone through with surgical precision. And at the peak of the gash was this huge craft, non-human in nature, aerodynamic but organic, looking bumpy, notched, and alive, and dripping an unknown fluid. Most shockingly, he claims that inside the craft, felt like he could experience something communicating with him telepathically, saying that they meant no harm, and were peaceful in nature and needed assistance. Now he claims shortly after this, helicopters and men in black military uniforms took him away and threatened him into silence, threatening his family and his livelihood if he didn't comply. Now, he sat on this story for years, only speaking out about it years after. It sounds very similar to the story presented by Herrera. Now do you think this is fact or fiction? The video interview seems very genuine, and the story seems complicated and very detailed for a hoax. Hopefully we know the truth on this, or hey, 
Maybe it's better not knowing. And number one, footage from the Hudson River. And coming in at the number one spot today is going to be some shocking footage captured on an infrared security camera on the Hudson River on a marina. We've talked a lot about shadowy governments, secret retrieved alien crafts, decades spanning conspiracies, psyops, cover ups, secret organizations, and I just thought we could all need a breather, you know? <laughs> something light, end the video something fluffy and fun. And it's about time I included one clip of a grainy, strange object darting across the sky that we can all argue about or speculate on wildly. It's, it's the most fun part of UFO stuff. The clip is short and sweet and you get everything you need. We see a pretty clear view of a marina and then bam, right in front of your eyes. Seems like somebody hit the FTL drive is taking off to a new galaxy, right? 12 parsecs away. Like what else could that be? Now I always try to play fair with the skepticism. Some commenters aren't convinced that this is proof of mass relay based travel in starships with some saying that it's as simple as a security camera bugging out and if you'll pardon the pun catching a bug flying close by at a particularly high speed. Leaves a trail because the longer shutter speed being used by the camera at night the object appears so brightly because it's illuminated by the infrared LEDs in the camera which are designed to illuminate objects close to the camera at night which all sounds very reasonable but at the same time now I don't know I don't know maybe it's just because I've been talking about aliens maybe it's because I watched the video slowed down a few times, but it really seems like it's something just blasting off, you know, blasting off like Team Rocket. The object appears out of nowhere for a few frames, shoots off into the dark, and then vanishes. It doesn't seem like a bug is what I'm trying to get across, but maybe that's just because I want to believe, you know? We're getting closer and closer to it every day. It's only a matter of time now before you log on to YouTube and you see Top 5 Scary uploading Top 5 Coolest Aliens I've talked to personally and the thumbnail is gonna be me shaking hands with one. Look forward in the next couple weeks. Number five, falling from the sky. Coming up first today is going to be this wild footage that was posted to TikTok quite recently. It might have flown under the radar, but now it's blowing up. And if you're into the supernatural and the unexplained, maybe you've seen it on your front page already in between videos of cats falling over. It was posted by user P-M-E-S-A-S-S-O, P-M-E-S-S-A-S-O, and it showcases a truly bizarre encounter, and possibly a close encounter of the first kind. In this video, we can see something falling from the sky. Now, it's difficult to make out entirely what it is, but it looks more technological than not. It's not a bird. It looks a bit like it's a falling craft or a drone of some kind that's been shot down. Do you remember that week or two in February where every day a mysterious unknown craft would get shot down and then the government would refuse to explain or comment on what would happen? Remember how that happened and now we've all just moved on from it? I'm still thinking about it. Anyway, after that craft seemingly descends to the ground below, we see in the sky that a bunch of military fighter jets seem to be in hot pursuit of it, which definitely makes me pretty suspicious if there's fighter jets not even a minute behind a strange, unidentified craft. Now, there are some doubters in the comments who aren't as convinced. Some say the crafts are there for an air show and the thing falling from the sky part of it as well. Of course, did they consider maybe the aliens were the one putting on an air show? And the government didn't want to be upstaged, and that's why they sent a craft over. If I know anything about the US military, it's that they don't like being second best at anything. And if you want to watch a place that's the number one best at something, it's top five scary, and it's scary videos we've got. If you can think it up, we've got a video or two on it. I mean it. Megalodons, ghosts, ghouls, goblins, aliens, conspiracy theories, horror movies, basically anything freaky under the sun or above it, we got two or three videos on. So hit subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell so you don't miss a single thing, but if you'd be so kind, do that at the end of this video, because I got four more mysterious orbs and UFOs coming up for you right now. Number four, Arizona's mysterious orb. Coming up next today on our list of strange sightings in the sky is this mysterious footage of an orb-like sphere bouncing around through the clouds. This clip was uploaded and posted to the UFO subreddit a few days ago where it blew up almost immediately. Posted by user Amvion and shout out UFO subreddit, making my job so much easier every day. The clip is a snippet from a local news station in Arizona reporting on a series of wild files Wild files. Reporting on a series of wildfires in San Bernardino, California. When the camera catches something a little hotter, that was a pun if you see what I did there, you can see a strange little orb floating around high above the forests. Now, it's very difficult to tell from here, but it looks to be moving at an incredibly fast speed, with seemingly no method of propulsion or exhaust trails to be found. It can even be going through the smoke at one point during the video, which would be catastrophic for most aerial craft, as this area would be far, far too high to approach via helicopter. Now, a user in the comments added a little bit of additional insight too. It looks very far out from where any 
anyone could be piloting a drone. Looks to be a few miles out in the brush. Any civilian would be heavily discouraged if not outright prohibited from flying a drone near a wildfire area with a possible crash with a helicopter being disastrous. So it has to be something that wasn't supposed to be in that airspace or maybe doesn't even know where it is. So it's hard to tell what's going on with this one. I'm not sure what any skeptical answers or rational answers could be beyond the usual catch all of strange drone or weather balloon. The object doesn't move too erratically or non-humanly so it doesn't seem like it itself is making the decisions. I'm really not sure what this could be my friends. Which means you know what time it is. You let me know down below what you think it might be. Or just tell me something nice about your day. You know, I don't know, something that made you smile today. Number three, something from the sky. Coming up next today at our number three spot is going to be this short, sweet, mysterious clip posted to us on the most reputable source of information on the internet, TikTok, by a user going by the name of Brian Daniel. Gosh, people have the weirdest names on the internet these days. Brian Daniel, what does that even mean? In this short clip, Daniel claims that near his home, something fell from the sky onto the ground below, glowing a searing bright blue, ethereally brighter than anything he'd seen before. Commenters said they'd seen the same thing in Florida where the uploader lived. News reported that it it was a meteor, but Daniel claims that it goes much deeper than that. He claims that the next day he tracked the crash site of the meteor and discovered what seemed to be a government operation cleaning the possible crash site, filming some feds standing around with their thumbs and their pockets on the beach. From there, Daniel claims that a mysterious man in a suit was on his front lawn filming his house and him when he got home and he didn't look like he was from the housing authority. Eerie. For what purpose? We don't know. Now, as fantastical as this video is, I'm always more than a little weary to believe something from TikTok just because the app is very, very easy for anyone to edit content with. And this video is literally three disconnected shots clipped together. I know I'm a man on the internet telling you to believe things, but I think you should always be incredibly rational and skeptical and take everything with a grain of salt. And there's nothing to suggest that these three things were even taken by the same camera. Now, the meteor in Florida is real. That happened on April 13th. 2021, so jot that down, that did happen. But the thing that's really holding me back about this clip and the reason I find it more skeptical than I believe it is because the mysterious agent at the end of the video is wearing a suit that doesn't quite fit him. I thought they were the men in black, not the men in the dress for less at Ross's summer collection. <clears throat> Bet you didn't know I could go there. Number two, what's on the moon? And coming in next today is going to be this incredibly weird clip posted to TikTok recently by a user going by the name of Larry Lou. Now, this is one of the stranger supernatural UFO clips I've seen in a few minutes. You'll see why in a few seconds. You'll definitely want to see this. In this strange clip, we can see something filming something bizarre that seems to be orbiting the moon. We can see some unknown objects flying around our moon getting a little too close for comfort. That's our moon. Is that our own technology? Are these man-made satellites or are these scouts, drones, or something else not of this world? Now, before we really put our tinfoil hats on and get wild with the speculating, we need to talk about the zoom in and the quality on this camera. I am inclined to believe that this guy works for NASA because he seems to have the James Webb telescope in his back pocket. I have watched innumerable, countless, countless UFO clips for work. And I have literally never seen a clip this high quality. I was salivating watching this. I can't even talk about the alien stuff because I'm too busy focusing on the pixels in this thing. You can make out the, the footprints on the surface of the moon. You can see Neil Armstrong size 13 on the dust. You're telling me this guy shot this on his phone? Why is this man not filming every single supernatural occurrence on this planet? If we set this guy up in the woods, we would have Bigfoot, Mothman, the Loch Ness, all that proven, disproven within an afternoon. I need to take five. I need, I need a drink. Okay. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. Back to the original video. Most people in the comments were like me, solely focusing on the incredible lens on this user's iPhone. A few people suggested that that could be the American flag from the surface of the moon. I find that a bit unlikely, but I don't know enough about moons to disprove that. So what could it be? Let me know down below in the comments, or hey, feel free to just continue to comment on how impressive the camera zoom is. What What is he working with there? What am I working with? I don't know. Number one, crop circles. 
I didn't need to say it like that. Coming up last on our list of UFO sightings we just can't wrap our noggins around is this footage that was taken in 1989. Now I know the title says 2023, but if you really squint 1989, 2023, I don't know, they look exactly the same to me. It might be a vintage, but that just means the high strangeness has been aged to perfection. Don't dismiss it till you get your eyes on it. It looks like an excerpt of a documentary about aliens and UFOs of some kind, sort of like what you're watching now but bet the guy hosting this isn't even half as charming. In the video, clear as day, we can see two strange, small, metallic spheres racing around a farmstead, glowing bright against the shroud of the night sky. They seem diligently at work, creating an intricate pattern below in the fields. Some sort of circle in the crop, uh, an almost crop circle, if you will. I feel like crop circles kind of fell out of vogue in alien culture, which is a shame. I think they're very cool and fun. They always make me think of the underrated M. Night picture, Signs. I know some people hate that movie, but I thought otherwise. Anyway, I guess our parents were much more frightened by flattened designs and bits of the grain and cereal, and we just don't feel the same way. But I, for one, want to bring it back. I want to bring crop circle culture back. Now this clip is pretty remarkable. Some say it almost looks too good, and there's been a raging debate in the UFO and alien community as to whether or not this was a real clip or a very well engineered hoax for darn near 30 years now. Detractors argue that it's CGI, while believers state that the CGI would be too advanced for the time. I mean, most CGI around this era look like reboot, you know? Not to besmirch reboot, but come on. Well, we probably won't find the answer today to whether or not it's a hoax or not because only you can truly decide that, okay? The truth is out there for you. Just like only you can decide if M. Night Shyamalan is a misunderstood auteur or a total hack. We're just not gonna talk about the Avatar. Number five, Red Eyeball Ship. In January of this year, a man in Spokane, Washington was in his living room when he happened to sight a strange alien craft that caused him to question his beliefs and his place in the universe. In his own words, our backyard camera recorded this strange object we put a camera in our backyard because stuff has been coming up missing. But one morning I had the TV on in my living room as I was sitting on our couch. I happened to look up at the TV and saw this strange object. I went out on the back porch and I couldn't see that object at all. But when I went back in the house, it was still there. I went to get my brother to show him what I was seeing. He didn't know what it was, but he was seeing it too. Then it started to move out in the field where I didn't see it anymore. Then it started to come back towards my backyard. Again, it looks round with a red eyeball in the middle, but I have no clue to this day what it is. I took a couple photos in infrared. If you look in the center of the red, you can see something. Looking at the photos, it is difficult to come up with another explanation for what this strange unidentified flying object could be. Number four, an American UFO. Our next tale was posted this year but details an experience from the year 1980. The witness shared his story of seeing a UFO that seemed to be affiliated with the US government, but he also posits a theory about why the government would allow this ship to be seen by the public. I had a sighting in broad daylight in 1980 at around 9 a.m. in early December. My mom and hundreds of other motorists witnessed it as well. We were driving to visit my father at his work in Beverly Hills and were waiting to hop on the freeway in Santa Monica when we saw your classic silver disc. It hovered completely still at about 150 feet or so for 10 solid minutes. Remember, we were crawling slow as molasses traffic. We got a very good look at this thing. On the underside was stenciled US Air Force. It looked very official, and we assumed it had to be one of ours. Then, after hovering for 10 minutes, it shot off towards the southwest like a bullet. I've never seen anything move so fast in my life. It was shocking, but I have a theory as to what the craft was doing there and why we witnessed it. I don't know how familiar you are with Jimmy Carter on the issue of UFOs, but he is on record as having had a sighting of his own in 1973. Carter was no flake. He had a degree in nuclear physics and is a former naval officer, retired at the rank of lieutenant, which in the Navy is like the army equivalent of a major. Rank promotions are much harder and time consuming in the Navy. Anyhow, Carter tried like hell to get disclosure during his presidency. He knew he was being stonewalled. When you think about it, 
It's unacceptable that the nation's most powerful elected leader cannot declassify something that the public, the world, has a right to know about. But what I've come to believe is that Carter ordered a captured or back-engineered UFO with official Air Force insignia to fly over a populated area, where thousands were waiting in traffic to get on the freeway, so people would ask the questions he couldn't find the answers to. Number 3. Father and Son UFO Bonding Next, we have a story from Nova Scotia where a young man saw an alien craft and panicked. He thought that no one would believe him until his father told him about his own close encounter from years before. Here is his story. My living room at the time had a window above me behind the TV. So I am watching TV. I don't remember what exactly. It was about 2.30 or 3 a.m. at this point. My father got up to use the washroom and went back to bed. I got up to get a drink and saw something out of the corner of my eye, outside the window and above the high school. I literally could walk outside my house, take two steps, and I was on school property. I see this light above the school. I figured it was a meteor shower or space junk. I grabbed the binoculars. I looked out the window to see if I could see it. I couldn't really get a good look. It was too blurry through the window. So I went outside to have a look. It was not very bright in my small town. I look out towards the school. I see something I can only describe as a ball metal, almost like a flowing liquid metal. But to my eyes, it seemed like it was taking the form of a sphere, condensing in on itself from time to time and rippling, as if the surface rippled like water. The light from it appeared that way. It was circular, bright, white, almost silvery. At times, it seemed that the light coming from it had faded, and I could see that it was a solid sphere, silver in appearance. I do not know how big it would be. A guess would be the size of a two-seater passenger plane. It darted from above the school to the hospital in a blink of an eye. The distance was about a quarter of a kilometer, but on a somewhat linear path. I had my eyes glued to it, and it blinked out of existence. It is the only way I can describe it. I could no longer see it. I scanned around the sky with the binoculars, then found it was above a church about a full kilometer away. Same strange ball rippling like metal. I was outside for, I believe, 25 to 30 minutes. Based on my coming back in between 3.30 a.m. and 4 a.m., my brain could not comprehend what I was seeing. I literally thought I was dreaming or experiencing some kind of hallucination. I felt as if what I was seeing was straight out of a movie or sci-fi book. It was like it was darting around our entire town at random intervals, going from one part to another within the blink of an eye. The distance it traveled from the school to the hospital to the church is in total 1.4 kilometers. I snapped and for some reason started crying. I ran to my dad and woke him up. It's a satellite, is what he said. My father enjoyed watching stuff on UFOs and personally believed the US government covered something up about Roswell. But I never really said too much. He told me to go to sleep. I was terrified for whatever reason. I was so scared after it. I did not sleep for months unless one of my parents was awake while I fell asleep. I really struggled with whatever I experienced that night for a very long time. It was a horrific experience for me and hard to even talk about. I had extreme anxiety and depression from it. I was only a teenager, just barely. I found myself being paranoid. I did not want to be alone at all. Anywhere, in the daytime, I would make sure I always knew where someone was. I was never alone. I was so afraid, I started saying prayers. I spent the next five years looking at everything I could that was related to UFOs. The sensation I had from it. I felt a oneness, kind of, but also so completely overwhelmed with fear. It felt as if my skin was trying to escape my body. My spine burned, and the entire time I was filled with thoughts of, this is amazing, and I'm going to die. I need to get in the house. All the hair on my body was standing up. I was sweating. When I got in the house, my shirt was nearly stuck to me in sweat. My father thought I went outside and got attacked and ran away. I was crying and rambling about some craft in the sky and how it was going to get me. My father told me he never saw anyone so absolutely terrified before, that I was nervous and would look out the windows at night to make sure I was okay. I've never been so afraid in my life of anything. My body was telling me I was going to die. My father didn't like me waking him so I could sleep. My mother, well, was not in the picture. My father's reaction is based off of a sighting he had in the 70s that some people in the town saw. He was ridiculed by people for talking about the craft he saw so close to the ground, it looked like it was going to land in the blink of an eye. 
It darted off and was gone. He said it was circular in shape, like the classic UFO, glowed bright yellow, and had a low hum to it. He doesn't really like talking about it. Number 2. Another father-son tale. Next, we have a story from a man who was not a believer in alien life until one night his young son pointed out something in the night sky to him. In his own words, I was in my home in Almond, Michigan. That time of year, it gets quite dark quite early. It must have been around 8 p.m. My son, who at the time was 12, came running into the house, saying there was a UFO right outside our house. Let me add, at this point, I was not one who believed in UFOs. I went outside, and my son pointed south and upwards and said, Look. The funny thing was, at first I didn't see anything. But I did notice it was unusually dark. Then I noticed a very dim light. I suddenly realized that the reason it was so dark was that there was a huge craft right over our driveway. It was at tree level and was moving north at a very slow pace, approximately a slow walking speed. There was a very distinct humming, exactly like a large transformer humming. There was a very dull light in the middle, and as it traveled down our driveway, I made out a row of windows around the craft. The windows looked very large. I remember walking down the driveway with my son. The next thing I remember is standing out in the field north of my house, still looking at the UFO, when suddenly it went from approximately 90 or 100 feet straight up in the sky to where it was a pinpoint of light. It just looked like another star. This happened in under a second. We continued to watch it for quite a while when it took off in a northwesterly direction, like a meteor, and was gone in a second. There are a lot of things I can describe if you are interested, but this is the basic part. I don't feel like I was abducted, but honestly, I do not remember how I got from my driveway and then into the field. Number 1. Bigfoot. Alien Hunter. Our final story is perhaps the most insane sounding story I've ever read. It began when a group of friends went to stay in a cabin in Missoula, Montana. At first, everything seemed normal until they looked to the sky after dinner on their first night, as one of the witnesses reported. Right there, hovering above the meadow at almost the level of the hills off in the distance, it appeared to be a triangular shape slash sphere shaped like an arrowhead. It had a flashing red light at each point, and they flashed at the same time. Slowly, the craft started turning until it was pointing right in our direction. We all squealed with nervousness. We all convinced ourselves and each other that it was much too far away and that there was no way it could see us. Jason got up and turned the outside lights off. Then, the object turned off its lights. When Jason turned them back on, it did as well. They did this a few more times, with the craft always copying their actions. Then, with no warning, it just shot forward and then came to a dead stop over top of us. And when it stopped that quickly, it seemed that the momentum made the front end point downwards right at us. The group ran inside and hid, with one of them eventually working up the courage to look out the window, only to see yet another rare sight. Bigfoot. The witness kept quiet about this because, you know, one thing at a time, but that night heard bipedal footsteps on the roof of the cabin. The next morning, two of the friends went to the river to fish, and the others had coffee on the porch, but looked to the tree line and saw the drivers of the alien craft. I saw as clear as day what is commonly called a grey alien. Its big bulbous head was peeking out from behind a tree, and I saw its dark almond shaped eyes and the tiny nose with two very small holes. I'm not sure if it felt me looking at it, but it slowly moved back behind the tree. At that point, the fishermen came running back, saying that they had crossed paths with Bigfoot again. Forty feet into the woods of mainly ponderosa pine, they saw the Bigfoot. It walked step by step with them, and then it looked over at them and realized they were watching it. That's when it started walking towards them. They started running, and they saw that it was walking as quickly as they ran. When they made it through the woods, they got to a clearing they ran with everything they had. They said it was dark brown in color and maybe seven feet tall. Its hair was bushy in spots. Most people go their entire lives without seeing aliens, Bigfoot, or UFOs. So the fact that this trip to the cabin resulted in a hat trick is pretty impressive. If this is true, why was Bigfoot so close to an alien craft? Is he perhaps an alien as well? <laughs>